Thank you, Mr. Chair. For now, wala pa pong timeline itong mga uh, usapin na ito sapagkat uh, lumalalim po ang ating usapin sa West Philippine Sea. Yan lang po. Thank you. Can uh, SMNI elaborate on that, Mr. Uh, Chair? Kasi ang uh, nabanggit kanina, whatever is uh, the stand of, uh, for example, uh, China doon sa West Philippine Sea, hindi daw makaka-affect sa kanilang coverage. Pero ngayon, Mr. Chair, ang binabanggit dahil uh, umiinit ang issue, then uh, hindi pa definitely makapagsabi ang SMNI, kailan mapipinal ang agreement? Katulad po ng sinabi ko, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. You have yes, the part. Katulad ng sinabi ko po kanina, wala pa pong final date dahil hindi pa po kami uli na kikipag-usap sa CGTN kung kailan po ito uh, maisa sa pinal. Kaya pong aming mga balita ay isa sa pinal. Sige, Mr. Chair, kasi ang uh, naging tweet mismo ng SMNI News, ang pinakita natin kanina, ang sabi po doon, the partnership deal is set to be finalized. And ang date po nun ay July 18, 2023. So, Mr. Chair, uh, ilang buwan na rin ang uh, lumipas kaya I think it is timely for us to ask, no? Kasi nga ang uh, involved dito ay uh, ang uh, patuloy na operations ng uh, SMNI and we have uh, the right to know kung kailan talaga mapapinalize ang ganitong agreement kung ito naman ay titindigan talaga ng SMNI na matuloy. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, last, Attorney, the last meeting with the executives of SMNI and China State TV, the CGTN, was last July 2023. But still, we are still in a process of negotiation. It's not yet final. Hopefully, uh, as soon as possible, as long as wala pong ma-violate na law ng ating batas, we will agree. But assuming na may violations of the law, we will not sign any agreement with the TV CGTN. That's why we would like, would like to undertake na yung SMNI, we will follow all the laws uh, and the Philippine Constitution with respect to this agreement. Na Mr. Chair, ang uh, kasunod po natin na uh, magiging uh, tanong. No? Dahil uh, ang uh, SMNI, uh, as we have observed, eh, naging uh, part ng kanyang uh, pag-present ng mga uh, balita, whether totoo man o hindi, ay ang uh, pag-red tag sa iba't iba mga tao. Na Mr. Chair, uh, concerned ang ating mga ang mangingisda na nandyan sa area na malapit sa West Philippine Sea. Dahil uh, sila sa totoo lang, uh, mahal nila ang bayan, tapos ang at stake dyan ay aside sa territory natin, kabuhayan nila. Now, Mr. Chair, they are uh, very bothered with uh, this kind of partnership. Dahil kapag halimbawa sila ay uh, nagsalita in defense of the West Philippine Sea, paano sila i-cover ng uh, SMNI? Kung ganon kasama ang tingin no, sa mga taong uh, nagpapaabot lamang ng kanilang mga uh, hinaing. They fear that if ever lumala ang uh, nangyayari sa West Philippine Sea, baka sila pa ay uh, i-red tag ng uh, SMNI, tatawaging mga kalaban ng bayan. When in fact, what they are doing is actually in service of uh, the goals of our country. The reply... I, does that, uh, are you asking for a reply? Yes. Uh, Attorney Dorantino. Uh, we believe, Mr. Chair, that there, there is no red tagging. We never practice red tagging. And in fact, wala po sa batas ang red tagging, Mr. Chair. So, sandali. Um, so, ang sinasabi ko nyo, hindi rin nag-red tag. Never. Then you follow it up by, there is no law. Yes, Mr. Chair. That describes red tagging yes, Mr. Chair. or defines red tagging. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, meron na pong mga uh, bahagi ng ating judicial branch na nag-define ng uh, red tagging. We have Associate Justice uh, Marvick Leonin, nandiyan din, din ang Manila Regional uh, Trial Court. So, Mr. Chair, uh, andyan na rin po ang mga definitions. And, uh, Mr. Chair, isa nga ito sa mga mabibigat na usapin natin eh. Kasi, Uh, itong uh, nangyayaring uh, red tagging, totoo at trial siya na nangyayari. So, uh, hindi natin uh, matanggapin eh, hanggang ngayon ay uh, dinedenay ng uh, network na ginagawa niya ito kasi napakarami na pong mga independent uh, 
outlets and even other uh, fact-checking uh, agencies na nagsasabi na nagre-red tag ang uh, SMNI. Halimbawa, Mr. Chair, so actually, maliban dun sa issue nga, di ba, ng pangre-red tag sa mga defenders din ng West Philippine Sea, ay napakaraming ding mga usapin pa. For example, Mr. Chair, uh, we have Vera Files na nag-fact-check ng uh, isa sa mga claims ni uh, Lorraine Badoy Partosa. Ang sabi po nila ay, uh, for example, we have uh, Jonathan De Santos na isang uh, officer, actually chairperson ng National Union of Journalists of the Philippines, Mr. Chair. So uh, supposedly, uh, the, if SMNI claims that it is a legitimate media organization, then dapat katuwang niya no? at pinoprotektahan din niya ang kanyang kapwa media. And right now, they are even appealing to other media outlets to uh, defend its uh, freedom of expression. Pero Mr. Chair, inabuso ng SMNI ang kanyang freedom of expression to the point na pati media ay uh, nire-red tag nila. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, meron po ba tayong uh, resource person mula sa, for example, uh, media practitioners natin? Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, meron po bang from ano, like media practitioners? Yes. Uh, yes. Can you already reply? Because we will have to move. No? Let us, we're still discussing the bill of the Honorable Nograles, uh, that we, the committee report. So we will uh, have to wind up already so that we can move on to the other questions. No? Okay. Yes, please. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair. You. Mr. Chair. Oh, the Honorable Clarify Nograles, lang, I'm sorry, uh, ma'am. Resolution pa po, ha? Hindi po bill yung final ko. Resolution po. Yes. Resolution po. Sinasabi mo kasi, Mr. Chair, bill. Hindi po bill My apologies. <laughs> uh, the resolution uh, authored by the Honorable Nograles. My apologies. Uh, we now proceed. Please. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I was asking if yun, meron pong mga resource person tayo from like media practitioners or media groups. Please. Mr. Chair, uh, with all due respect, uh, I will defer the question of the Honorable Raul Manuel to our in-house consultant for broadcast operations, Mr. J. Sonsa. Uh, we have in our presence the to represent SMNI, Mr. J. Sonsa. You, you have the floor, sir. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with respect to the uh, things that were elucidated, uh, uh, explained by the uh, Honorable Congressman from uh, the party list. Yes, sir. For as long as there is a jurisprudence and there is an approved a law with uh, pertaining to red tag, I'm sure any and all media practitioners will follow it. In the meantime, that there are no laws or what he was mentioning were independent opinions of some associate justices. Mahirap pong pangunahan namin ang mga ang ating uh, Supreme Court, ang House of Representatives, ang Senate, na gagawa kami ng bagay na hindi naman naayon as uh, we were simply, uh, if there are, uh, kung meron po kayong naisip na na-red tag kayo, perhaps it was simply because uh, there were descriptions which were pronounced by the very uh, Anti-Terrorism Council but it is not because it was a personal or a network practice to red tag you. Pero tinitiyak ko po sa inyo kapag kami batas na nabawal yung ganon, susunod po kami. Maraming salamat po. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, respond and to, uh, to wind up. We have three branches of government. Uh, while 
sa atin po, Mr. Chair, we filed a bill to criminalize red tagging. Pero habang wala pa po yan, hindi big sabihin na wala tayong gagawin kapag nangyayari ito. And in fact, kaya, nga, kaya natin sinasalang ang mga resolution, ang isang resolution and other resolutions at mga batas. Paano ka lang batas dito? Dahil gusto nating uh, mapanagot ang mga actually uh, supposedly nasa media pero sila din ay uh, nasa forefront ng red tagging na ang batayan nito Mr. Chair ay maraming kasinungalingan. Kasi napakadaling maghabi ng kasinungalingan. We can have a thousand versions of lies. Pero ang katotohanan po kasi Mr. Chair nag-iisa lang yan. At yan ang mahirap na gawin. At yan ay dapat ipagkatiwala natin sa mga credible uh, media organizations. And as we can see right now, SMNI is a huge exception. Hindi lamang sa journalistic standards, pero sa paano ina-uphold ang katotohanan, Mr. Chair. Kaya with that, given the detrimental effects no, of uh, what SMNI is doing, hindi lamang sa mga kababayan natin ano, na nagpapahayag, merong mga advocacies, pero may implications na rin sa national sovereignty natin, Mr. Chair, with this partnership na uh, as we can see, parang hindi nga rin talaga lubos na madepensahan dahil tinikdown pa ang uh, sarili nilang news item. So that's why uh, kailangan talaga, Mr. Chair, uh, merong managot doon sa mga maling ginagawa. That would be all for now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, Manuel, after that, we will go to the Honorable Gutierrez. Uh, but before that, the Chair would like to recognize uh, the new members that uh, entered the hall after the roll call was made. Uh, of course, the Chair would like to recognize the Honorable David J.J. Suarez of the 2nd District of Quezon, the Honorable Elsel Galeos of the 2nd District of Cebu. He is in here already. Of course, I saw uh, the Honorable... Jervi Luistro um, of the Second District of Batangas, welcome, ma'am. Um, the Honorable Daphne Lagon of the Fourth District of Cebu, welcome to my neighbor. The Honorable Jeff Konghun, the Second District of uh, Sambades, to the equally good looking representative of the city of Parañaque, the Honorable Congressman Edwin Olivares. Thank you for coming. Uh, the, of course, to the Honorable Christian Unabia of the First District, Misamis Oriental. And last but not least, to the hardworking Honorable Member of this, of this Congress from the Second District of uh, Marikina, city who promised to be here after the bicam uh, and i hope uh, the budgets have improved the honorable stella luz uh, kimbo of the second district of marikina city welcome ma'am and uh, of course yes i was looking for him early on the honorable alan t is he here yes, sir. sir welcome we now proceed who Mr. Chair. Wait, the Honorable David Suarez, yeah. J.J. Suarez, a... has a rejoined there. Then the Honorable yeah. Dan Salvador Dun will now have a point also na... a inter another question. Yes. Thank you. Doon sa point na ni-raise ni Congressman Manuel, um, I understand it was the president of SMNI. Um, sir, are you with us today? Yeah. I understand um, you represented SMNI in Beijing in July this year. Um, to talk about the partnership between your two networks. Um, can you please um, further elaborate uh, on the details of this partnership between these two networks? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, SMNS collaborated with China's state TV, CGTN, following the executives meeting in Beijing, China, in July 2023. Uh, Nag-usap po kami kasi in-invite po kami nila doon para sa uh, pag-cover ng ASEAN Games. Yun yung parang unang usapan na magkaroon kami ng collaboration 
na makahingi kami ng mga videos ng mga palaro doon at maibalita dito sa atin sa Pilipinas. At uh, doon nagmula ang magiging partnership sana na gagawin pero hindi pa na-finalize na hanggang ngayon. So, but for now, uh, hanggang sa video sharing lang po kung ano po ang pinakamagandang uh, balita, may mga breaking news na kailangan malaman po ng, ng mga Pilipino ay binabalita po ng, ng SMNI. Ganun din po kung meron pong mga balita na nasa Pilipinas na gusto rin malaman ng mga Chinese. Ganun din po kasi ang practice ng networks dito sa Pilipinas. In fact, marami pong humingi sa amin ng videos. Binibigyan po namin sila as long na mayroong courtesy po ng, ng network na kung saan sila humingi. Ganun din po kami, humingi din po kami sa kanila. Ganun lang po kasimple ang partnership. Wala pong ibang uh, wala po, uh, sa ngayon din po hindi po po nakafinalize at wala pong uh, pinirmahan ng mga partnership po. Hanggang verbal agreement lang po, Mr. Chair. So, so thank you very much. So Mr. Chair, in other words, wala pa pong dokumentong uh, draft wala pa between po, both Mr. parties? Wala pa po, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I just want to share kasi yung concerns ni Kong Manuel. Uh, may lumalabas kasing sa China news na yung mga, Pilipina, yung mga Pilipino ang naging aggressive sa West Philippine Sea. Binaliktad po nila yung kwento. Iba yung kwento sa kanila doon sa tunay na nangyari sa mga Pilipino. Kaya ito po ay medyo may pangamba din para sa akin. Dahil alam naman natin, di ba, there are always two versions to the story. But you know, as Filipinos, we always have to support that which the, the Philippine government holds. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, before I give it to the Honorable uh, Rog, uh, I just opened the letter now. No? Uh, it's addressed to to me. Uh, this is uh, this to respond. This is response to a December six invitation for your committee for me to appear this on a hearing December at its hearing on December eleven at eleven o'clock a.m. I have not been an officer of Suara Sumijo Corporation from the time of the enactment of Republic Act 1442 up to the present. Hence, I must respectfully send my regrets to my, for my absence in the hearing today. Sincerely, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy. Do you confirm that he is not an officer since the renewal of the franchise in 1919? 2019, the Honorable Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. Rosette, hindi po po opisyalis siya post, kasi inibitahon namin sa hearing niya, na ito si Pastor Kiboloy. Mr. Chair, hindi po, Mr. Chair. So, but he owns, may shares po siya sa kumpanya. Establish po natin yun. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Attorney. May I be recognized? Supliko, you're recognized. Your Honor, uh, in 2018, um, Pastor Apollo owned 1.5 percent of the uh, of the stock holdings of uh, Suara Sug Media Corporation. But uh, sometime in 2021, 2022, he uh, donated his shares to the cooperative, which is now uh, report, which is now in the con uh, which co uh, cooperative is now listed as a stockholder of Suara Sug. Media Corporation as of uh, the filing of the 2023 amended GIS. When did the, in 2020, wala na po ba si Pastor Kibuloy? 2020, uh, he was still a stockholder. Officer? No, no, not an officer, Your Honor, but a stockholder. Yes. As to 1.5%. Uh, Correct. 2020, it is na wala eh. 2020, sometime in 2022, Your Honor. Okay. So, kaya nga, pag report sa 2020, wala na po yung pangalan niya. That's correct, Your Honor. And he has zero shares in SMNI or Swarasug? Yes. At the moment, yes, Your Honor. No shares? No shares at all. Okay. Under his name? Yes, Your Honor. But if he is a member of the cooperative or any other company, then he could have, still have his shares? He is correct? not a member of the cooperative, Your Honor. He is not also a member. 
That's he's correct. not also a director of any other other corporations that are uh, involved in the sole. How about the sole corporation? Yes, Your Honor, he is not. He's not. Yes, Your Honor, he is not. Uh, so, in any form, shape, or manner, he is not an owner. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. Do you, are, are you feeling better now? Because last hearing, you had to run to the clinic. Are you okay? Well, uh, I'm monitoring my uh, BP, Your Honor. Okay. So, I hope you're okay. Sure. Thank you, Your Honor, for the Thank concern. You. Yes. Just, uh, uh, short yes, the Honorable Kimbo. Yes, in the last hearing, I made a uh, manifestation that um, based on the GIS, uh, Mr. Apollo Kiboloy was listed as ultimate beneficial owner. I believe until 2021. So can we um, hear a confirmation well, he, they, uh, from uh, Attorney Sukiko? Uh, Kong, or or at, maybe the question is, until when was he the ultimate, ultimate beneficial, beneficial owner? Okay. Attorney Rodrick Suplico. Your Honor, I'm holding the uh, a copy of the uh, amended GIS for 2023. Uh, in the last, he is not a stockholder of record oh, that's... as of this time, Your Honor. No, earlier, sir. So the question is, until when was he ultimate beneficial owner? As so the, the GIS that I read in the last hearing were, I believe, 2021 and 2022. So ang pinakita po natin, was a change in ownership or change in UBO from 2021 to 2022. So, ang, sa ko, as of end 2021, siya po ang nakalista na UBO. Let me check the record, Your Honor. Uh, I wanted Chair. to speak okay. based on the record. Can you, we will, I'll, I'll go back to you, no? uh, Attorney uh, Suplico. Thank you, Your on Honor. On two points. Uh, one, yung kanini sa IT, the turning down of uh, who, who put down the page and this issue raised by the Honorable uh, 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 Kimbo. Uh, you have to validate also because the documents held by the Honorable Fernandez says hanggang 2020, but your answer to me earlier was 2022. So uh, we would like to know uh, a, a clear response under oath on this issue. The Honorable Francisco, the, the Honorable uh, um, Ramon Gutierrez is recognized. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the Honorable Franz Castro, then the Honorable uh, Ramon Gutierrez. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, point of order. Yes. What is the point of order, the Honorable Dan Fernandez? Isn't it the policy of the rules of the uh, this committee to have a uh, alternate on the uh, Yes. Uh, asking my apologies, questions? the Honorable Dan Fernandez, because I'm just following the list of, as I stated early, earlier, it's... Uh, the first to register will be acknowledged. Uh, don't get, but, you know, I don't uh, yes. want to undermine okay. the uh, minority, yes. you know, but yes. it is the policy of this. Yes, uh, so I will, uh, alternate, uh, yes, alternate. yes. I would like to give way first to Honorable Franz Castro. Then if the uh, Ramon, the Honorable Gutierrez will give way to you, then we will go for it, okay? Like As yung, a senior member kasi of the majority, kasi ma majority are uh, also because they, for their turn. Yeah, but you will have to put your name. Yeah. Because, you know, if you're not in the list, then I will not be able to determine who's majority and minority. Like, you know, the Honorable Tiyo ko po yan, kaya kaya ko pong sabihin yun. The Honorable, uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Franz Castro is recognized. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So ito, ito dapat tatanong ko nung second, ano, no, nung second committee hearing, the rundown of the different cases filed against ano, no, Lorraine Badoy and also to uh, Lorraine Badoy. Okay, and... Um, uh, siguro ang unang tanong ko po, uh, Mr. Sp uh, Mr. Chairman, si, si Attorney Tolentino po ba yung attorney rin or counsel po ni Lorraine Badoy sa lahat ng kaso? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. I'm only engaged with respect to this hearing, Mr. Chair. Ah, uh, okay. So, thank you po, no? Um, uh, siguro for the, ano, no, for the information uh, ng ating, ano, no, ng ating committee, ira-rundown ko lang po yung ilan sa mga, um, mga red tagging na ni, ni, ni Lorraine Badoy no? na nakasampa na ngayon doon sa iba't ibang mga complaint na uh, in relation din po doon kay uh, Representative Pimentel last time. So, nung April 9, about kay Maria Reza, yung April 19, 2022, this administrative complaint filed by the Office of the Ombudsman, violation of Section 4A of the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards over malicious and defamatory post 
and article articles against journalists. So uh, Reza listed as at least nine instances when Badoy branded her as an enemy of the state using his verified Facebook page or through official websites. So Badoy had also falsely declared Rappler as an ally and mouthpiece of the CPP and PA. So ito po yung isang kaso. Pamilya po pa kayo doon do sa uh, program. I have no personal knowledge with respect to that case, Mr. Chair. So wala kayong ano no. So next, uh, Mr. Chair. Um number, another one, Mr. Chair, yung former uh, former Kabataan Representative Sara Elago. On December 7, 2022, this is also an administrative complaint, violation of code of conduct and ethical standards for public officials and employees against six officials of ntfl including Badoy, filed with the Ombudsman. Badoy and other officials were charged and committed grave misconduct for repeatedly claiming she was a communist rebel and accusing the Progressive Party List Group of acting as a front organization for the CPP. So former Representative Elago argued six government officials were acting in official capacity and and are guilty of malfeasance when they when they made claims against her. So, um, ito rin po, ano, isa rin pong kaso. And then on December 4, 2020, ito po yung kaso ni Lorraine Badoy when, he, when she was still a spokesperson of the ntf LCAP. 2020 pa po yan. So, December 4, 2020, by karapatan, criminal and administrative charges against Badoy, NSC, um, Hermones Esperon Jr., Antonio Parlade, and Moka Uson for crime against humanity by, perso by persecution under 2009 law incorporating international humanitarian law. So, Karapatan Secretary General Christina Palabay said she and Karapatan had been persistently tagged as terrorist members or supporters of the CPP and PA by the respondents. So, yan, isa pa. So, ibig sabihin, Mr. Chair, so, um, eto pong si Lorraine Bador, talagang ano niya, persistent, consistent po yung mga red tagging na ginagawa. Uh, hindi lang po siya uh, ngayon sa nakalipas pa, even uh, before na, uh, before ngayon na ano natin, pinapatawag natin sila, no? So marami pa pong kaso. And then, um, another, ano po, ano, another, uh, another case po. Sa Supreme Court, October 2022, various lawyers, judges, law practitioners, and their respective organizations. So, the Supreme Court, motto proprio, and the following numerous formal and informal complaints raised to its attention, ordered her to explain why, she, why he shouldn't be cited in contempt after her online rants against Judge uh, Mag, uh, Magdosa Malagar. Her runs were spurred by a decision junking the government's petition to proscribe as terrorists the CPP and PA. Magdosa Malagar said crimes alleged in the government petition were against the law but did not fall under the terrorism as under by as defined in the HSA. So sinabi po dito no um, uh, sa isang kanyang programa, Mr. Chair, if I kill this judge and I do so out of my political belief that all allies of the CPP, NPA, and BF must be killed because there is no difference in my mind between a member of the CPP, NPA, and BF and their friends, then please be lenient to me. She has also insinuated that judge's husband, UP, UP Cebu Chancellor Leo Malagar, has links to CPP, NPA, and used to be communist cadre. And days prior, the SC also issued a stern warning against those who continue to incite violence against judges and their families. It said such action will be considered as contempt of court and will be dealt with accordingly. So, sinasabi natin, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, dito yung about po dun sa mga red tagging. So, meron na po itong ano no? Meron na po itong jurisprudence na binanggit po ni ni representative Manuel at meron na rin po itong ano na sa Supreme Court okay yung tungkol po doon sa desisyon ng Supreme Court na sinulat po ni Justice Leonen and isa pa po last na po ito Mr. Chair yung Ibon Foundation February 10 2020 administrative complaint with the ombudsman against Badoy 
Parladen Esperon further persistent attacks against and red against and red tagging of progressive groups, which the policy research group said violated provisions of code of conduct and ethical standards for public officials and employees, conduct grossly disgraceful of the public interest, unprofessional, unjust, and insincere political bias, unresponsive to the public, distorting nationalism and patriotism. So leading up to the complaint, Badoy in an episode one news, the chief claimed that Ibon was part of the CPP instead of addressing Ibon's concern. Uh, after, in fact, check numbers, numbers cited in the Duterte le uh, legacy campaign. So, ito pa po yung mga madadagdag natin, ano no, mga complaint at kaso po against dito kay uh, Lorraine Badoy. So, ang, uh, meron po akong uh, ilang tanong po no, dito sa KBP. Nandyan po ba ang KBP, um, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, meron pa po akong mga ilan pang uh, question po. Ayun, at sinabi ko lang po yung mga ano po no, mga Apo. ilan pang mga kaso, Mr. Chair. So, ito ang sinasa ang kasi doon po sa mga uh, bino-broadcast po no ng ni Lorraine Badoy at saka ni uh, ni, ni ni Eric uh, ni Celis, ni Mr. Celis tungkol doon sa kanilang mga uh, pagsisinungaling, lying, unconfirmed na mga report. So, gusto ko lang po siguro ma matanong um uh, um uh, maybe it's uh, it's NTC, KBP at saka kung meron din po dito, dito ay MTRCB, uh, Mr. Chair. So, ang unang pong tanong, bakit po di pwede ang mga side comments expressing personal opinion sa isang uh, news program? So, um pwede po ba ang KBP na na sumagot doon. Mr. Chair, uh, that provision was included in the Code of wow. Ethics of KBP so that the public is not misled between a news and a commentary. Yes. So there should be at least a separator between a news item and a commentary or the person on board specifies that that is a comment. Uh, as a disclosure, Mr. Chair, this provision is under review with the KBP because of the changing style of uh, commentators and newscasters. But the important thing is there should be a distinction between a comment and the news item. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So isa pa pong tanong ano uh, doon po sa tatlong agency natin kung sino po yung mga kapag ano uh, whether uh, it is true or false so pwede na rin pong explain. So after airing information provided by a confidential source quote unquote an effort should be first made to look for a source who can identify or who can who can elaborate the information provided by the confidential source. So is it ano po is it true or false po? Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair? May I be allowed to answer? Yeah. The... Yes, please. Uh, it is good practice to have independent verification. And the verification of news from in, uh, from a informant, it should not be standalone. Ethics demand and good media practice demands that you make an independent verification from sources outside of the informant. Thank you po uh, sa KBP. And then ito rin po, no, true or false then, and explain, rumors or gossips shall not be aired in guise of news using terms like anonymous source, confidential source, or unknown source shall not justify the airing of rumors and gossips, especially in news program. That's correct, Your Honor. So it is true po? Yes, it is true, Mr. Chair. Yes, so it is ano, no, on Section 4H, Article 1 um, of, the new, the, of the new sources po. Tama po. Okay, so when, uncon Chair. when an unconfirmed reports are aired, it must be emphasized that they are unconfirmed. True or false? 
That is correct, Your Honors. Okay. So, sa SMNI. So, programs intended to malign and fairly criticize or attack a person, natural or juridical, are prohibited. Tama po. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to manifest, Mr. Chair, that SMNI is not anymore a member of KBP, but we have our own uh, policies, internal policy of our company to follow the highest standard of journalism. In fact, our motto is truth that truth that matters. So that's okay. our motto, Mr. Chair. So, ibig mo sabihin, kung hindi ka member ng KBP, so your program can malign, unfairly criticize, or attack a person, natural or juridical? No, Mr. Chair. So, no, Mr. Chair. Dahil hindi na kayo KBP, sabi mo eh. Uh, so, ang tanong ko kanina, is it true or false? Programs intended to malign, unfairly, etc. Sinabi mo, dahil hindi ka na member. No, Although, uh, it is in the, ano no, Section 2, Article 4, on personal attack. Even though, Mr. Chair, that we are not part anymore of KBP, we have our own standard of journalism, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chair? Interjection. Interjection. That um, they just withdrew their KBP accreditation uh, after the first hearing. Yeah, yes. Before okay. the second hearing or yes. on the day of the second hearing. So uh, that's, uh, please take note of that, those dates, okay? And uh, this hearing commenced or started, they were still members of the KBP. Uh, thank you. Yes, please proceed with your line of questioning, the Honorable Frank. Are you done? Congo yeah. Cheres. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair, with the indulgence of my colleague. Please proceed. Uh, short interjection. First of all, uh, I agree, Mr. Chair, precisely the point I wanted to raise the first, that uh, despite the withdrawal from membership from the KBP, this does not excuse the SMNI for they have been bound during their membership. And all of these instant uh, cases were during that period. But right. that aside, Mr. Chair, another thing that we'd like to bring up, um, I believe during the last hearing, I think it was uh, Congresswoman Stella Kimbo, who requested the Manual of Operations, Code of Ethics, and everything that came to follow. Mr. Chair, may we confirm with the officers of SMNI if they have submitted the same before this committee? Uh, Attorney Tarantino. Yes, Mr. Chair, we have with me the... What do I the manuals of operation, including Mr. Chair. No, no. Have you submitted, the question was, have you submitted that to the committee secretary? Uh, not yet, Mr. Chair. We will submit now, Mr. Chair. Mr. Okay. Chair, unfortunately, we wanted to have that right away so that we can study before coming to this hearing. How are we going to make use of that very thick, voluminous document in this today's hearing kung ngayon lang po sinasubmit? That Actually, is our concern, Mr. Chair. And I believe there are other documents that this committee requested last hearing that have not been submitted. So that's something that we most respectfully want to ask the ComSec to review, no? Actually, Just those two points. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Actually, um, Mr. Chair, we promised... Honorable Ramon Gutierrez. Anyway, can you please just submit those documents? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And uh, uh, to... may we ask the page to please get those documents already today and the other documents that were requested from you so that uh, we can review. If you will have to call even a hearing. Remember, uh, just I already have the permission to conduct hearings even during the Christmas break. So, Mr. Chair, like if to... you do not submit Attorney Trentino, we will call you on December 25, okay? For a hearing. <laughs> Mr. Chair, and I'd like to... Rolex Suplico, okay? Mr. Chair, okay. I'd like to put on record that we are submitting right now, Mr. Chair, okay. the code of the manual of operation of SMNI. Second, Mr. Chair, all the contracts of all our co-production contracts okay. and black timers, Mr. Chair. Okay. And third, Mr. Chair, we're also submitting the contract of ad advertisements Okay. Of all the contracts of SMNI. Is that all in the members. folder that you're submitting? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Page, please uh, 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 retrieve the uh, folder and uh, we will review and we will give uh, soft and hard copies to all members of this committee, uh, including the Honorable uh, Ramon Gutierrez, who is very particular with the contracts and the operations manual. Mr. Chairman. With the Honorable uh, Stella Kimbo. Are you done, the Honorable Franz Castro? Because po, po, si, si po, si Honorable um, Dan Fernandez. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be asking as well, Mr. Chairman, in relation to what the... Ah, okay. Uh, the Honorable Dan. Uh, the gentleman, uh, yes. I, I mean, uh, Attorney uh, Marco Lantino, they have submitted also the uh, the, the, the uh, uh, service uh, agreement you know, with the different yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Yes. sponsors. And then po. But 
have you submitted also uh, the uh, official receipts and uh, different uh, invoices that uh, together with all these agreements? It was not part of our, but we will submit that, Mr. Chair. I remember in the okay. last time we asked for the uh, submission of all these uh, documents as well. We sit up. Uh, yes, yes the Chair, invoices. Including and the, in the contract, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah, I know. But uh, maybe for us if, to find out yes. if uh, they are totally paid or not yet, invoices pa lamang binibigay nyo. So we need that document as well. Okay. So yes, please Chair, submit. We will submit that within the day, okay. Mr. Chair. Okay. okay. The uh, order... Uh, is uh, we will request uh, SLMNI to comply with the request of the Honorable Dan Fernandez. Uh, Ma'am, you still have the floor. Yes. Um, thank you sa clarification, Mr. Chair. Ano, mahalaga Opo. itong tanong ko na ito dahil pinapakita natin dito yung responsibility po ng SMNI sa kanyang mga ano, no? whether it is black timer, whether it is uh, their talent, ay may responsibility sila na sumunod po doon sa tamang mga rules natin ano o kung kung di man sila kasama doon sa kay BP so itong mga nang, itong babanggitin ko at ipapakita ko mamaya na situation at program nila ay before naman na yan na mat matanggal sila sa kay BP pero hindi ibig sabihin dahil tanggal na sila sa kay BP hindi sila magpa-follow ng ano no yung tamang ano no tamang pagbo-broadcast opo okay so kaya nga tinanong ko dito sinabi ko kanina True or false, programs intended to malign, unfairly criticize, or attack a person, natural or juridical, are prohibited. Okay? Although nandiyan yan dun sa, uh, sa, sa KBP, ano. So, is it, is it true or false? Kasama din ba yan dun sa, ano nyo? Yes, Attorney Tolentino. Uh, Attorney Tolentino. Uh, our stand, Mr. Chair, although we are not anymore a member of KBP, we have our own standard of ethics. Uh, we have our own standard of journalism, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, ano nga yung standards ninyo as regards the program that intend to malay, unfairly criticize, or attack a person, natural or juridical? In compliance okay. with our promise, Mr. Chair, we had with me also the manual of operation, Mr. Chair, that we are going to submit today to the Honorable Committee, Mr. Chair. Okay. okay. Kasi, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, itong, uh, sinasabi ko kanina, no, na, na standard na hindi dapat ginagawa before. Alam ba, sa akin, sa organization, or even din kay, ano, no, the, the, the Congress, yung tungkol doon sa, ano, no, tungkol doon sa travel, etc. cetera. So, okay. kailangan ay, ma, 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 ano natin, ano, makita natin, yung, ano, ng, ng SMNI as regards to this eto mga sinasabi nating pagmamalain. Okay. Opo. Meron po akong last na Mr. Opo. Chair. Salamat po. Maipakita ko lang sa inyo yung isang program nila yung laban sa bayan kaugnay dun sa pag okay. pagmamalain sa akin. Po tayo. Yes, at Can pagbibigay sa akin videos? ng ano no. Can we hear the video as requested by the honorable Castro. Uh, please dim the lights if needed. Thank you. Meron yatang ano, uh, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, meron yatang technical problem? I go back. Uh, meron problem ba yung video ho ni the Honorable Castro? Yes, oo. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, in the interest of time. Yes, ma'am. Pwede um, na natin ayusin muna, tapos balik na natin. Yes, oo. Pakita four. na natin. Pero hindi pa, Kasi, hindi pa ako sinasagot, eh, no? After siguro nung video na yon, sagutin opo, ako. Opo. Na kahit na yung internal uh, ano nila, nakalagay ba yun sa tina yung tinatanong ko kanina? Okay. Yung pagmamalain, pag uh, unfairly criticize, i-attack ang person, opo. natural or juridical. Pag uh, naayos yung video, balikan namin kaysa round two. Thank you very much, Honorable okay. Castro. Thank Pero kailangan kasi, 
uh, pupunta tayo kay Congressman Nograles kasi okay. marami pa humagtatanong. Thank you. Pero sir. alam po ninyo, napakabait ni Kong Dan Fernandez. Papahuli na raw siya. Uh, magbibigay, uh, daan mo, magbibigay daan muna siya kay uh, may papasok po si Congresswoman uh, Kimbo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Housekeeping lang po. Yes. Um, this pertains to the letter of Opo. Pastor Kibuloy, um, uh, which you read earlier. So, um, dito po, he mentions that um, he had not, well, according to him, he had not been an officer of the corporation um, from the time of the enactment of RA 11422, which was in 2019. And this is the reason for why he says... Um, He should be excused from uh, this hearing. However, um, Mr. Chair, so first of all, uh, based on our records, um, as of 2021, he was listed as ultimate beneficial owner, and that's based on the documents submitted to us. And as we know, ultimate beneficial owner means that he effectively controls a corporation. Um, of course, he, he can argue that may technicality, hindi pa rin yun officer, but Green pa man, ibig sabihin nun, marami siyang kaalaman being, um, having effective control over the corporation. Number two, um, pwede ba natin malaman? So sa ngayon po, ang executive pastor ay si Pastor Akobo. Tama ba? Uh, can I answer that, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Prior to him, sino po ang executive pastor? Pastor Apollo si Kibuloy, Mr. Chair. At nagpalit sila... Um, noong December 19, 2022. Tama yes, po ba? Mr. Chair. Okay, so in which case, si Pastor Kibaloy ay executive pastor up to December 19, 2022. Tama po? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, in which case, um, Mr. Chair, ibig sabihin nun, parang minimislead yata tayo ng sulat na to. Kasi even after the enactment of the franchise agreement, siya pa rin po ay uh, officer ng... Uh, ng corporation, uh, being Chair. the exec executive pastor until December 19, 2020. Can I explain to that, Mr. Chair? Uh, there is a legal concept with respect to corporation soul. Uh, a corporation soul, usually this is a corporation with respect to religious organizations. If you, are, if you are the chief executive minister, you're holding the properties of a church as a trustee of the church. The real owner of the church is actually the members of the church. In fact, that is based on Section 108 of the Revised Corporation Code, Mr. Chair. So that is corporation code, a uh, corporation soul, different from one-person corporation or, or an ordinary corporation. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, hindi naman po ito korte. Ang um, oh uh, uh, yes, purpose attorney, naman po ng hearing. Atty. Uh, Tultino, ang tanong ho niya is, I mean, wag ho tayo lumabas, kasi we're talking about soul corporation, wag ho tayo umikot-ikot masyado sa officers. We're talking of UBO. Yes, Ultimate Beneficial Owner. Owner who has effective And, control over the corporation. Yes, that is the question of the Honorable... Uh, yes, in which case, Mr. Chair, which means that he has sufficient information okay. and therefore may kakayahan po siya to shed light on... Uh, The, the matter Anong pag UBO so, ko kayo? In which Alam case, Mr. Chair, ang act sa akin lang po is we must insist that um, that he appears before us. You know so, why? Alam po, Alam po ninyo, attorney, katiyan. In the letter kasi, sabi niya, nung nalilinyo yung franchise niya noong December 19, 20, Anong 2019. 2019. Hindi na raw siya officer. Yun ang surat. Ang tanong niya, he, he may not be an officer, but he is still the UBO. He was never an officer of SM&I. Correct. No, but nakalagay nga ron. Pero you know, now, he is still the UBO. So he's invited being the UBO. So in the next hearings, we will now, I mean, the records that you have submitted to the committee shows that he is, he is, the, he, he is and was the UBO until 2022. Before the So, Can I explain so hindi po hindi po siya mali hindi ho tugma dun sa surat ho na binigay niya yun ang clear point of the council ni, I'm sorry, ni Congresswoman Stella Kimbo hindi po siya tumutugma because the uh, importante ho dito sino po talaga may ari na ito you, you know, we're looking at the ultimate beneficial owner no? I think Mr. Chair the best person to answer is the lawyer of Pastor Kipuloy who is? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair 
Oh, now that you're not anymore the lawyer, you are the I'm lawyer. I'm a lawyer of, of SMNI, Mr. Chair, not okay. a lawyer of Pastor Kiboloy. Is she here? Yes, she is. Ma'am, please, uh, 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 please state your name. Good. Yes. Afternoon to the, our esteemed members, to yes. our chairman and esteemed members yes, of the Committee yes. on Discipline Prices. I am Attorney Antoinette Principe. I am the counsel and representative of Pastor Kiboloy, and I was tasked specifically to furnish this honorable okay so my questions uh, wait, before that were you present in the previous hearings no your honor because my engagement is only for today's hearing okay maybe we ask you to please rise so i ask the council to administer the oath please raise your right hand this way to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth before this congressional inquiry to help you done Thank you. Okay. So thank you very much for serving the letter, which now has opened another set of questions. And uh, we're, this position of the Honorable Kimbo is that uh, there, are, there is an inconsistency of the content of the letter and now uh, the documents that you've submitted before this committee, especially in the GIS of 2022 and 2023. She's now going into, there's a comparison. Can yes. you please reply? Is um, it inconsistent or not? Your Honor, I'm afraid I will. I am not able to answer that question intelligently because when I had a meeting with Pastor Kiboloy last December 8, we only had a very brief discussion. He received the letter which came from this committee on the evening of December 7, and we had a very short meeting on December 8. And in as much as it was a very long weekend holiday. He does not have the documents. He has no access to such documents, so we cannot answer that intelligently, Your Honor. Mr. So, so, Chairman, Mr. Uh, Chairman. So my question is, uh, Honorable Paduano, who can answer the question? I mean, the, if the lawyers of SM and I cannot answer, and you cannot answer, then who will now answer the questions raised by the Honorable Kimbo? Mr. Chairman. Attorney Tolentino. I think, Mr. Chair, uh, if the committee will allow, can we ask the SEC, Mr. Chair, uh, to explain what is that corporation soul all about? Mr. Wait, Chairman, no, no, no. Mr. Chair, that's not the matter yeah. being discussed with you. Yes, Chairman. wait. Uh, the Honorable Padwan, uh, the Honorable Kimbo, are you going to give way to the Honorable Padwan? Yes. yes. Because she has the floor. The Honorable uh, Padwan. Thank you, Mr. Request. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the lawyer, Mr. Uh, Pastor Kiboli, is present. But the trabaho nila is to just submit to us the letter of uh, to the invitation of this committee. And I think he, sinabi niya, wala siyang knowledge. And the letter of Pastor Kiboloy, it's up to the committee if we will accept or not. Diba? And we cannot question the, the details from the lawyer because in the first place, masagutin nga, hindi niya may detalye, hindi niya lamang detalye. So, Mr. Chairman, it's up to the, to the committee, to the chair, to decide whether in the next hearing we still invite Pastor Kiboloy. Yes, because so. it's up to us to decide. Okay. Thank you very much. We will decide on that later. Thank you very much, Honorable Paduano. So, because the only reason why I acknowledged you, ma'am, was because Attorney Tintini said to acknowledge, requested that you will answer the questions being raised by the Honorable uh, Kimbo. Now, you can't also answer the same questions being raised yes. by the Honorable uh, Kimbo. Yes, so, yes, I will just... so, we're still left in a quandary as to uh, his being the UBO, which we're really interested in. No? The Honorable... Um, yes, yes uh, Mr. Chair, I will recommend. simplify my questions, yes. just based on the letter. Um, the letter says, I've not been an officer of the corporation from the time of the enactment of the RA, so that's 2019. Hence, I must respectfully send my regrets for my absence in the hearing today. So... Ang sinasabi ba dito sa liham ay dahil hindi daw siya officer, wala siyang sufficient na information and therefore, hindi na siya a-appear ngayong araw. Yun bang ibig sabihin nun? Ipaliwanag niyo lang. Yes. Um, yun, yun ang, yun ang logic. To... Yes, yes. Or no lang. yes or no lang. Para madali. Yes or no. Yes, because he's not an officer and Ay, the invitation states... So, so tama, it has to do with not having sufficient information. Yes. Correct. Okay. 
However, it is very clear based on our documents, and I will furnish you a copy, that he is or he was ultimate beneficial owner at least April 29, 2021, which is beyond the enactment of the RA, which is 2019. Okay? And as ultimate beneficial owner, he has effective control over the corporation. Now, will you agree with me that having effective control over a corporation, would you have sufficient information about the corporation? With due respect to the chair. Yes or no only. If with you have respect. effective control over a corporation, any corporation, if person X has effective control over corporation Y, does person X have sufficient co information about corporation Y? With due respect to the chairman and members of the committee, um, as I said, the engagement of Pastor Kibolo to this representation was solely... I am asking about person X and corporation Y. Again, I am not privy to that specific matter. Mr. Chair, our attorney is not being responsive. No, so I, you know, yeah, I, you know, you were you were introduced as the lawyer of uh, Pastor only, Kibolo, just to deliver. Are you trying to tell me that you were sent here, ma'am, just to deliver the letter to the yes, chairman? Your Honor. That's the only thing. Because, You're not supposed um, to answer any question. Yes, Your Honor, because the Pastor Kibole respects the proceeding today's proceedings despite the very short period of time he was given when he received the invitation. As a show of respect to this committee, he wanted to have someone personally deliver the letter. Okay, so he, she was he just here get... just to to deliver the, the, the letter. Yes, Your Honor. So, Attorney Suplico, can you answer the questions as, as, as a lawyer, since this is an SMNI affair? Well, Your Honor, in our records, Specifically, the uh, amended GIS for 2023. His name does not appear. Well, that, that is also, Mr. Chair, let me point out, let me point out one thing that we also uncovered when we were comparing documents with the SEC. It turns out that the submission to Congress is different from the submission to the SEC. So ito pong submission and GIS to Congress, which has the beneficial ownership declaration, Ito pong binasa ko. Ito po ay wala po dun sa submission sa SEC. Kaya nagtaka po ang SEC. Sabi nila, bakit? Well, we can ask the SEC to, to verify that. But yun po ang nag- Who is the beneficial owner in the SEC records? May I ask the SEC? For, um, for, at, 20, at the... for the April 29, 2021 submission, can you double check your documents and see if it has a beneficial owner declaration. Yes, Mr. Blanco. Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. Um, the the repository of the submissions of the GAS, which contains benef the ultimate beneficial owner uh, owners, is with the EAPD. But we confirm, uh, Mr. Chair, that the and and we have uh, access the documents that are with the Honorable. Uh, Kimbo, and and we, we confirm that. Um, what do you confirm? We confirm that from 2020 to 2022, um, the, the declaration in those documents, uh, uni uh, ultimate beneficial owner for uh, Suarez was uh, a, a pastor Kiboloy. So you're saying that. Uh, I stand the, corrected, Mr. Chair. 2020, yeah. 2020. I'm sorry, from 20. Can you please repeat? Uh, attorney, Bla you're a lawyer, right? Attorney, y yes, sir. Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Attorney Padilla, Padilla. Yes. yes. Are you confirming what this from what date again? Can you please repeat the dates uh, until 2020, Mr. Chair? He was the ultimate beneficial owner. How about this? when? So, 2020, 2021, 2022, they are not, he was not anymore, do not anymore, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, the Honorable Kimbo in the uh, 2021, exactly on April 29, 2021, they submitted exactly the same Who? thing. SMNI. SMNI. Okay. And declaring the same that that uh, Pastor no. Kibaloy is still was the ultimate beneficial owner. So yes, Attorney Padilla. So it would appear, Mr. Chair, that uh, the, the Honorable uh, Kimbo is correct that 
we, we have different documents. So that was what see, I was saying see. earlier. So now there's a they there's there, there's that confirmation that uh, the document submitted before the SEC is different from the document submitted before this honorable committee uh, for the information of uh, SMNI. Uh, I don't think that's something that can be refuted anymore unless uh, you will say that uh, you had the I mean, what, what can you say? Uh, maybe, Mr. Chair, may pagkakamali sa pag-file sa House of Congress. But based on our record, Mr. Chair, in twi only 2020... These are notarized documents, attorney. Huh? Yes, uh, maybe... So we will call now the notary public. Huh? We will go there. Bako mabuto tayo na New Year dito, attorney. But based Person. on our record, Mr. Chair, Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy is the beneficial owner only in 2020 because he is the trustee of a corporation soul, the executive pastor of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Correct. Because anyway. per description of the SEC, Mr. Chair, yeah, yeah, yeah. letter B, D, and I, Mr. Chair, only natural person should be included in the beneficiary. That's why the name of Apollo Kibolo was there. But okay. actually, our intent is that is that the uh, the corporation soul, the executive pastor of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, who is the trustee is Pastor Apollo Sikiboloy. Right. And he is not the trustor or the real owner, Mr. Chair. What? Well, I I mean, you know, um, we can rumble jumble the whole thing, but you know, the bottom line is who's the who is the UBO? You know, the UBO is very clear. And the SEC has manifested that earlier. The Honorable Kimbo, anyway, Honorable Kimbo, we will continue with the line. Are you willing yes. to give in already? I, I, are you, no. Do you still have a question? No, I, I'm just saying that um, these are notarized documents. Yes. And so the April 29, 2021 notarized uh, GIS clearly states the UBO yes. is passed. And that there is a now. And my bottom line, Mr. Chair, is simply that let's, you know, um, taking away all of these um, legalistic uh, um, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. concepts, right? All bottom line lang naman is that meron naman siyang sufficient ng kaalaman. Ang gusto lang naman talaga natin is to shed light on the matter. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. I just would like to ask a question. Ano lang ah? simple. Ano lang ah? Diretso lang ang sagot, Attorney. Yes, Mr. Chair. Iba yung sinabi sa SEC. Iba yung sinabi nyo sa committee. Ano po totoo doon? Yung totoo po, yung sa SEC po. So, fake ho yun na dito? Uh, hindi ba fake po? Maybe nagkamali yung nag-file po. Eh, hindi na to. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Doon lang po tayo, ha? Another salamat po. Can I Thank you. Okay. But, but no. nonetheless, 2020 is still beyond 2019, yes. which is the enactment. I know what, you know, we're, mas kaya paano ho natin i-justify yan. Iba pa rin po yung sinasabi po sa surat. Iba rin po yung ano. Yun ang punto ho ni the Honorable uh, Kimbo. But we will go back to that, ha? Yes, the Honorable Toby Chanko before the Honorable Dan Fernandez. I just would like to emphasize no, that this is, uh, I've been allowing all of these interpretation questions to shed light before we go to the discussion. Uh, we're already discussing the, the bill of the honor, the resolution of the Honorable uh, Nograles, but uh, we would just like to get some clarification, especially issues that were not raised in the last oh, hearing before we go into the vote of the committee report. Yes. The Honorable Toby Janko. Um, Mr. Chair, um, it's not as simple as sinasabi po ni Attorney Tolentino na nagkamali because these are both sworn statements. Correct. So meron isa doon na nagsinungaling. Correct. It's very simple. We yeah. cannot take it as uh, na nagkamali. Correct. So I just want to manifest that. Mr. Thank you very much, Honorable Toby Janko. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. Mr. Chair, Chair can I just manifest something wait, wait. as well? Wait, wait. Ladies first. The Honorable Kimbo. I'm, I move that we invite the... Pastor, Pastor Apollo Kibaloy. We will. We the, will. Next year. We will reinvite. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The Honorable JJ Suarez, the Honorable Dan Fernandez. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to share the sentiments of uh, Congressman Chang regarding uh, this uh, revelation. Uh, hindi po po pwede na iba yung sinasubmit nyo sa SEC tapos iba yung sinasubmit nyo dito sa Congress. Because it's supposed to be one and the same. Those are sworn affidavit, notarized documents. And then you have just now um, admitted na nagkamali kayo ng submission dito. Um, so on that point, uh, Mr. Tol Attorney Tolentino, um, again, that puts a lot of question on, on the truthfulness of the documents that you are submitting to the House of Representatives. 
which may tarnish the very franchise that you hold. Kasi ito po ang pinagbabasihan namin. Tapos when we discovered recently with SEC that you have just confirmed these two documents are actually different. Um, Mr. Chair, can I see the document, Mr. Chair? Can we check the document? May, Let's yes, compare. we will be. Can you please, Comsec, you're directed to give a copy to the owner, to Attorney Trentino. Now we now recognize from Laguna the Honorable Dan Fernandez. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Finally. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I was asking for, in the last hearing, uh, we asked uh, Attorney uh, Tolentino about the uh, uh, the documents pertaining to the 2022 um, service, quiet mo pare. service contract, invoices. Sa uh, and, uh, silence is requested. The Honorable Dan Fernandez is speaking. Yeah, yes. and all of the uh, 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 official receipts that was issued by uh, SMNI in relation to all your uh, revenues uh, collection and at the same time the different uh, uh, schedule expenses uh, that had been released by SMNI. Unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, when I read these uh, documents that they have submitted just now, it only pertains to 2023 and not on 2022. Thereby, uh, we will be having problem uh, with what we have uh, discussed uh, recently. I, I hope that you're listening, Attorney Mark. Ano? So can, can we kindly uh, show yung uh, uh, issues that I am pertaining to? Uh, siguro uh, yung pong 2022 kasi, uh, tinanong ko na po ito noong last hearing. At uh, tinanong po namin kung saan po nanggaling yung breakdown ng revenue po ninyo noong 2022. Kasi kumita po ang, uh, ang uh, Suarezu ng 105 million noong pong 2022. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. So, uh, ang sabi nyo, uh, walang kinita ang pulso ng bayan doon, right? Walang sponsor. And the very reason why we um, cite um, uh, Mrs. Badoy uh, for lying is based on these revenues. And if we're going to... Uh, move for a poor law, no? And not seeing in these documents, those he mentioned, she mentioned in the last hearing pertaining to all those uh, advertisers, advertisers eh, we will be constrained to put her in the detention. Kasi nga, talaga nagsimaling siya. Dahil dito sa sinabmit nyo, I haven't seen uh, Attorney Mark Tolentino. Wala ako nakita dito pertaining to the subject uh, ad advertises that she mentioned in the last hearing. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, we have no program pulso ng payan, Mr. Chair. Uh, huh? uh, only, only morning. Laban kasama ng bayan is the program of Badoy and Kay Eric, not pulso ng bayan, Mr. Chair. Okay. Doon sa laban ng bayan, she mentioned uh, three sponsors, correct? Yes, Mr. Chair, but based on my information, he has no pers she has no personal knowledge with that, Mr. Chair. So in other words, uh, wala kayong sponsor doon. Yes, Mr. Chair. So uh, so she, she was lying indeed. Dahil sinabi niya meron. And you told us na wala. Uh, and that's the reason why we cite her for contempt. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. So, Chair. Yeah, okay. So in other words, kinoconfirm pa rin ng mga dokumentong to na talagang wala na sponsor yung programa na kung saan siya ang host. That's why I answered, Mr. Chair, in our last hearing, Mr. Chair, that there was no advertisement, Mr. Chair. Okay, okay. So, indeed, so we were correct, correct in, uh, in, uh, in uh, citing her for contempt. I tried okay. to correct, Mr. Chair, Dr. Lorraine, Mr. Chair, in her answer. All right. Now, uh, Attorney Tolentino, uh, we asked for the documents sa 2023. Makikita po ninyo dyan. Uh, pakibalik lang yung slide. Kasi may revenue kayo ng 90 million, uh, 105 million. 2022, Mr. Chair. 2022, oo. And trying to uh, to uh, read yung inyo pong documents that were submitted, 13 contracts to na sinabit nyo po ngayon. Total of 6 point, uh, 6 point, uh, 25 million ang totality nitong uh, contract na to. So, if you're going to assess yung pong 2022, paano po kayo nag-arrive sa 90 million? na revenue. 
para based, lamang po sa inyo pong uh, mga programa. Based on my personal knowledge, Mr. Chair. Now, we're not asking your personal knowledge. What we're asking for is the documents that we asked in the last hearing. Uh, And precisely the reason why we asked for it Because we wanted to find out saan ang galing itong perang ito. That's why, Mr. Chair, we will submit that within the day, Mr. Chair, with respect to the... Yes, the you chair. submitted is, the, is, the, is, is an agreement on 2023, not on 2022. We're asking for the 2022, 2021, but you gave us 2023. And today, papano namin... Well, mabuti na lang, nabasa ko yung labing tatlo. Nakuha ko yung uh, total, 6 point, uh, ano lang, 6 point 25. Meron kayong kontrata, 100, 900, 135, total lang... Uh, 6.25 million uh, for Mr. the year 2023. We are talking about 2022. Mr. And the total ng 2022 is 105 million. Explain to us, yan ang sinasabi ko, explain to us the schedule expenses and revenue that you have uh, uh, you have undergone. The, Kasi hindi po natin makukomprehend ano, kung saan ang galing itong pera nito. And as long as you are keeping those documents, there is a presumption that this money came from a polluted source. Give us the benefit of the doubt that this that does not come from a polluted source. Yes, Otherwise, we will be construed to think that this is something that came from that. Uh, Mr. Chair, the best person to answer that is our CFO, Mr. Chair. Uh, Who is the CFO? Miss Bing Ayon, Mr. Chair. Is she here? Miss Bing, and ito po kayo. Uh, please uh, reply. Andito po siya. Uh, Kaya rin po. Mr. Chair, unfortunately, she uh, she tested positive for, for COVID yesterday. Mr. Chairman. And there uh, was a letter. So, okay. it, it seems that you are eba evading ano, this kind of uh, questioning regarding the uh, source of your revenue. And uh, we, we really don't want to mention words that is so hurtful. Dahil kung titingnan mo to at bibigyan niyo kami ng agreement like this, 13 agreements na hindi nagma-match doon sa 90 million o sa 105 million per se. It's hard for us to analyze, 'di ba? And even the BIR, they are basing their uh, their uh, your taxable uh, amount based on your audited financial statement. They are not basing on the uh, detailed eh. Kasi detalye ang hinihingi namin but you're not giving us the detail and we cannot really compute even your your salaries yung production ng tingnan yung program and production expenses nyo ng 2022 nagjump siya ng 15 million explain to us saan Chair. nagpunta yung uh, per, sa, saan yung ginamit yung perang yan from 1.3 suddenly nagjump kayo ng 15 million Mr. Chair I just received with, with me Mr. Chair yes. the Swarasug Media Corporation Sales Journal Mr. Chair Can I submit this to the Honorable Committee, Mr. Chair? O oh, yan, kaya nga, the same thing, isasubmit nyo ngayon. Paano ko nababasa yan? Di wala, hindi, na ako, hindi, hindi na ako magtatanong. So, anyway, isubmit nyo na rin po sa amin. So, magiging basis na rin po namin yan. And can we ask the BIR? Andito naman po ang BIR, yung RD79, please. Hindi, wala nga rin yung CFO nila eh. Okay. We have invited the CFO you know, the in the CFO last CFO hearing. Was, the CFO uh, is we, not here. Attorney, I mentioned the CFO last hearing. I'm the bear, the records and the video will bear me She's willing to come here, Mr. Chair, but I, She's sick. we receive a... Okay, we have medical, our medical certificate. Please submit to the me. committee. Thank you. And then we asked okay. the, ano, the, the chairman, yung presidente. Sino bang presidente? Probably may knowledge presidente, ko sila. Presidente, kaya niyo pong sagutin yung tanong. Sige. Uh, At, sir? Uh, Ms. Rosette, sagutin niyo po yung tanong ni Congressman Dan Fernandez. Sir, sir, sir tanong lang po namin muna sa, sa 105 million from uh, 2021 45, tapos suddenly nag-jump kayo ng 105 million. Ano po yung mga sponsor that you got for the uh, programs that you have uh, produced? Ano-ano po yung malalaking mga mga sponsor that uh, you have contracted with? Okay. Uh, with all due respect, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I will answer the question with Uh, according to my knowledge only. Uh, 2022 po is election pe period po. Um, marami pong pumasok na political ads. Meron po kami mga AVPs. Meron pong, yung time na yun po, hindi pa po nati-take down yung social media. 
na kung saan nag-i-income din po. At yung tanong po ni uh, Honorable Congressman Dan Fernandez about sa expenses po, lumaki po siya, nag-jump off po ng hanggang 15 million. Dahil po nag-sponsor po ang SMNI News Channel ng pinaka uh, pinaka magandang debate sa buong Pilipinas. Apat po yun na debates. Wala po yung bayad sa lahat ng pumasok doon. Mahal po ang okada. So doon po napunta ang mga expenses. Uh, hanggang doon lang po ang alam ko po na mga exp- uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, salamat po. Uh, about the commission, uh, kasi mayroon akong nakita rito 2.6 million na yung commission. Parang, hindi ko alam ano po itong commission na ito. Kasi po, meron pong nag-sponsor tapos meron po silang agent. Ah, so yun ang commission nila? May commission okay. po sila. Punta tayo sa susunod na page. Uh, Tingnan lang po natin susunod na slide. Um, pero submit to ASA, to all the documents pertaining doon sa expenses nyo for the uh, salaries yes, program po, uh, and uh, production expense. Okay. Dito lang, may, medyo napansin ko lang yung advertising and promotion nyo. Uh, meron kayong ginasas na 12.1 million. Samantala ng 2021, 810 lang yung ginasas nyo. So what is this 12.1 million sa advertising and promotion? Do you advertise SMNI? So gumagamit pa po kayo ng uh, uh, advertisement and promotion for this for this purpose? What is this all about? Uh, Mr. Chair, hindi ko po masagot yung uh, exact na tanong po. Okay. Wala pa y- yung sa fuel and oil naman po ninyo. Okay. Uh, konti lang naman to, Mr. Chairman. And fuel and oil, nag-jump siya suddenly from 2.6 to 7.9 million. Do you have uh, other source of uh, transportation like helicopter or no jet? No po, kasi po, uh, nung time na yon nagkaroon po kami ng additional na uh, mark vehicle po para sa... Pero, Mr. Mr. Chairman, no, yung gantong kalaki na jump from 2.6 to 7.9 is not believable kung gagamitin nyo po lamang ay mga vehicle na ordinary sa sakyan. That is not possible with this, no? Well, I'm just saying, you know? So, submit us, so us as well yung mga lahat po ng uh, receipt. Well, actually, job yan ng BIR, eh. I think the, the BIR yes. should, should issue a letter of authority to start the investigation on uh, submit of getting all these documents. Huh? Wala BIR? Again? We asked them twice, right? This is the first time we have it. Uh, once, okay. So, sir, yun lang po, ano, pagdating po dito sa, ano, Pagdating po sa uh, yeah, sa, sa business expense nyo, suddenly nagkaroon po kayo ng business expense. What is this also? Yung 3 point something. Ayan, makikita mo nyo sa business expense po ninyo. Meron kayo dyan na uh, bigla kayo nagkaroon ng 3.2 something there. Eh. Ano po ba yan? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, talagang hindi ko po alam yung... The... Oh. Alright. Uh, I think, Mr. Chair, uh, the, the problem is the submission of all these documents. Ano? So we will be asking na lang po siguro to ask the BIR para at least uh, masimpina lahat ng mga documents. If uh, we are having a hard time for the SMNI to submit to us all these documents, I think it's incumbent upon the uh, authority that was given to BIR to uh, issue a law no? para sa ganun po makita po natin yung mga, mga documents na to. Um, I, I don't know what to do with this, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're having a hard time trying to figure it out. Kung paano po namin may babalansi po yung, yung mga revenues nyo and mga expenses ninyo. But there will always be a presumption no? that uh, this... Um, uh, money is being used in here are um, coming from a different uh, kind of sources. So, uh, debunk us. I-debunk nyo po kami para at least we will be thinking that this money came from a source that is good, not a bad source. Kasi nga, yun ang magiging presumption po namin dito eh. Hanggang hindi nyo po ipinakikita sa amin tong lahat ng ito, hindi po natin malalaman kung saan yung revenue nyo, sa kaya expenses nyo. Am I right, attorney? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yan. So, uh, one more thing, ano, Mr. Chairman. No? Uh, yung Bampibus po na Capital Holdings Incorporated, kasi uh, what is the primary purpose of this uh, holding company? Oh, sige. 
Okay. Second down. Gagalit na si Migs. Okay. Okay, so uh, with the no, with the indulgence of, ano, of my my uh, colleagues here, uh, siguro i-reserve ko na lang po yung katanungan sa susunod na lang po at uh, uh, Kailangan na na nagsalita na si uh, si uh, yes. si chairman and uh, with respect to our uh, ano, our uh, sponsor na resolution. So I'll be um, heading to the next um, uh, line of questioning in the next uh, round. Yes. Thank Chair. you. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh, again, sana po may submit na po finally sa atin. No? We're giving them another week para isubmit po lahat yung documents. Thank you very much. Huh? Okay. okay. Thank you, Chair. We Thank will you. be calling you again. The next uh, speaker, the Honorable Thank Ramon Gutierrez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, my line of questioning for in relation to this house arrest so filed by Congresswoman Negrales would have supposedly revolved around um, Mr. Sellis and Ms. Badoy, but understandably, they're not here given the other matters that they have to yes. attend to. So, Mr. Chair, in that case, um, I guess we'll have to make do if we may ask the uh, is uh, Attorney Tolentino still serving as counsel for them today? Yes, Mr. Chair, together with Attorney Rolex Suplico. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to ask the um, lead convener, see si Attorney Domingo of uh, MAD, if uh, they could quickly just give us a uh, rundown of the pending cases. I believe this was touched upon last time, but just to refresh our memories, maybe know, Mr. Chair, if there are pending cases uh, of fake news, red tagging, libel against uh, Mr. Celis and si Ms. Badoy. Thank you, um, Congressman. I was not actually uh, recognized by the ComSec when uh, she mentioned the resource yes. persons. So yeah. our I, apologies. Am I recognized right now? Yes, please. Yes, you are. Well, the, the common denominator here of all these uh, cases that we had filed, we are the movement against disinformation. We are representing certain uh, complaints. Yes, sir. Would be the red tagging. No? Oppo. Well, there, there, there is no uh, judicial definition of what red tagging is. Correct. But other statutes would cover red tagging in its own. No? Yes, according to me. By definition, red tagging is actually the malicious blacklisting of people or individuals or organizations that are against the present uh, administration or the other party in the political uh, uh, arena. No? So that would be essentially the definition. So what we did was, uh, Your Honor, we, uh, we, we uh, filed cases, uh, for example, in the case of Kadapan, who was the, the co-eds of the University of the Philippines who were murdered by uh, General Palparan, the SMNI was used as a vehicle for the interview of that General Palparan without even the uh, authorization of the uh, DOJ that was already uh, finally uh, resolved that the DOJ did not have any authority, did not give the authority to give that kind of interview on SMNI. Yes. Okay. Now, there are other, other certain uh, cases, but what I'd like to highlight here is the case of uh, Mrs. Badoy lambasting wholesale the Judge Malagar who issued that, uh, uh, that uh, decision uh, not proscribing the NPA NDF as terrorist organization. This actually is rooted in the independence of the judiciary. If you red tag the judge who is uh, adjudicating certain cases, then the independence of the Philippine judiciary is a co-equal branch of this uh, honorable uh, and august house. That would be the height of the impingement of the freedom of expression, even assuming that there is no red tagging as mentioned. But the court, the Supreme Court itself, the honorable Supreme Court itself said, it's actually practically cited and told Mrs. Badoy to stop doing it and red tagging Judge Malagar because that impinges on the independence of the judiciary. There are other cases, not, not very far from here. There is a case that uh, SMNI again gave the vehicle for the red tagging of your colleague, Congressman Franz Castro, recently. Mr. Chair, um, sorry to cut off C. Yes, Attorney Domingo. May I ask the uh, good resource person what date was the uh, issue on Judge Malagar and uh, what date 
yung issue regarding our colleague to Ms. Castro. Thank you, uh, Congresswoman Castro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's uh, October 2022 in GR number 263384, uh, Your Honor. And uh, the, the court very sternly cautioned Ms. Badoy to stop doing it. Mrs. Badoy even said that the judge was imbecile, that, the, that, that she belongs to the bowel of the earth and all other invectives on SMNI. That's why the reason why we went motu proprio, the, the court, Supreme earth. Court, motu proprio issued that uh, mem uh, memorandum or that caution. At the same time, the movement against this information filed a petition for indirect contempt against Mrs. Badoy, which the Supreme Court, the Honorable Supreme Court, took cognizance of and is now pending adjudication by the uh, Supreme Court. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, thank you. So we know the date of the case itself, but uh, may we know the date of the incident of the red tagging of the good judge? Is I, that in 2022 or 2021? 2022. 2022 also. Yes, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, please do proceed. Mr. And uh, of course, the others are, of course, against uh, Atom Pagaduan Araulio. He was red tagged repeatedly. We also filed cases against the uh, against the red tagging of uh, the journalist in Congayan de Oro, Kong Corrales. We also, uh, during the height of the COVID-19, SMNI was used as a red tagging vehicle against the frontliners. The, uh, the the medical doctors that were assisting the uh, the COVID victims, and the other nurses and other uh, field workers of the de Department of the Health, they were all red tagged. So there is a very perceptible a very perceptible trend that SFNI is being used as a vehicle for red tagging and what had been turned by uh, the Honorable Congressman Kimbo as a systematic uh, 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 vilification of certain people that are against their, what they are trying to advocate on uh, SMNI. So in other words, what I'm trying to say, uh, Your Honor, uh, Congressman Gutierrez, is that we are simply documenting and putting on record this various cases to highlight the fact that the Honorable House Committee on, on Franchise should take into this matter. Thank you very Pursuant much. Pursuant to okay. Section 21 of uh, Rule uh, 6 of the Constitution on this investigation power of the House Committee. Thank you, Attorney Domingo, uh, a Chair, uh, media law professor. Mr. Chair, if Congressman Gutierrez would allow. Gladly, Mr. Chair. Yeah, the Honorable Toby. Yes, because um, this this case was yung sa, yung sa Supreme Court po. Ano pong uh, petsa po nun? October po yan, uh, Congressman. Ano po? October po. 2022. 2022, right. Mr. Chair, last yeah. week sabi po nila, meron silang ethics committee or ano pa, ano may sabi nila doon? Like, Imbestiga ng oh, grievance po. committee. Supreme Court na po ang nagsalita, di ba po? Na yes. sinabing hindi ayos yung ginawa. Opo. Oh, Ano po kaya ang naging resulta ng investigasyon ng grievance committee tungkol sa bagay na yun, Mr. Chair? SMNI. SMNI. Ito po yung grievance committee na, yes. If we may uh, advance the information, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the committee uh, decided to uh, impose sanction against uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sellis. Is there a sanction, is there a document that would show that uh, a sanction was made? Sorry, I'm sorry. But okay, Ms. Badway, pala yung sinatron niya. Ah, so nakamali po. I was referring to uh, Mr. Sellis. So, na, na, so, 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 maliho. So, that is not a, uh, you're striking that, you're, you're requesting that, uh, you're withdrawing that statement. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you answer directly the question of the Honorable Toby Chanko? Yes, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, that time, I remember that the court ordered Shokos uh, for Dr. Badoy 
and we also called her on the committee, uh, Dr. Marlon, me, and the rest of the board. And uh, she she had submitted to the court uh, what, what is, ano pong sagot niya doon sa kanyang shock cost. At sinab, pinagsabihan din po siya na respetuhin po ang ating Supreme Court. At nakinig naman po. Pero ano nyo, ano nyo, anyway, ano nyo, uh, Alam po yung grievance committee na minimension ni Donor Bolchanko is very questionable also. Ah. Because I raised that issue that it, when they told me the, the composition of the grievance is the producer, the executive producer, the associate producer, how can you have a grievance committee? Eh, sila din naman na nagpalabas ng programang yun. Tapos sila direct, how they, they cannot negate or they cannot go against their talents. Kasi eh, alam po nyo, alam naman namin yung negosyo ni Congressman Richard yan, no? Pag ikaw ang producer ng show, ikaw ang executive producer, tapos ikaw rin ang grievance committee, hindi ka pwede. Kasi, anong pwede mo sabihin mali? Eh, ikaw ang producer ng show. Di ba, that's... You cannot contradict what you just did. Sila rin, nag, sila, sila rin nagkamali eh. Ang nagkakamali rin yung production staff din eh. Di ba? So, paano nyo gagawin yung, yung grievance? So, anyway, ibang usap, usapin yan ha. Pero I just would like to take note and put it on record again. That the grievance committee, I think, is uh, is not organized correctly. You can't have the executive producer of a show, the producer of the show, part of the grievance committee because they are part of the problem and they cannot be part of the solution. And I think anybody in television who has experience will agree with me on that. Yes, Honorable Toby Chang. Yes, uh, Congressman Richard. Yes. Yes. No, because this is a very serious allegation. Alam nyo, minsan, kahit hindi tayo nag agree sa decision ng court, we have to respect it. No? Correct. Hindi natin dapat patikusin yan. So, my question is, inibisigahan ba sila ng network? Nung nabas yung Supreme Court doon sa um, admonishment ng Supreme yes, Court? Yes, ma'am. Was there an investigation or not? Ma'am. Chair? Meron po ba? Uh, yes po, Mr. Chair. Pinatawag Anong resulta? Po na, pinatawag po namin si Dr. and she was reprimanded at uh, pinagsabihan po siya na igalang po ang ating korte. Mr. Chair, can we have a copy right now of the reprimand? Uh, we will submit within the day, Mr. Chair. In the day, within 10 minutes, Mr. Chair. Can you can you retrieve it from the office and send it to us? The uh, Ibiber nyo lang po sa committee secretariat. Yes, pa. Thank you very much. Thank the, you, um, Congressman Gutierrez. And thank you, Chair. General Bob Gutierrez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman uh, Chanko. Mr. Chair, so um, according to our resource person from MAD, we have uh, quite a few high-profile incidents ng red tagging, fake news. Of course, this is under uh, Ms. Badoy, but we also have the instance now that is being investigated doon kay Mr. Celis. I would like to also include as a high-profile incident of fake news. So, Mr. Chair, one more question that I have for the lead convener of MAD. Mr. Chair, do we have this kind of trend occurring in other media outlets, in other networks? Maybe you recognize your... Please uh, reply. Before that, the Chair would like to recognize the presence of our uh, Senior Deputy Speaker, the Honorable uh, Don Gonzalez Jr. of the 3rd District of Pampanga and uh, Honorable Representative of the 1st District of Agustin del Norte, the Honorable uh, Jose Aquino, uh, the second. And of course, uh, for the 1st District of Surigao del Norte, the Honorable uh, Bingo Matugas. Welcome, sir, to the Mr. committee. Chair, yes, please reply. Um, my apologies for the interruption, but may this representation be granted authority to leave the committee hearing as I have a flight to catch, Your Honor. Well, it appears if you don't have any substantial, yes. uh, your, 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 your role here is just to deliver a letter yes, to Honor. the committee chairman. Yes, Your Honor. So you're excused. Thank you very Thank much, you. Your Honor. Yes, now proceed. Uh, the Honorable, uh, yes. Who has the question? Yes, the uh, Honorable, okay. uh, uh, Mr. Attorney Domingo. I'm not sure the Honorable, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Uh, in answer to the Honorable uh, Gutierrez, uh, there is a very perceptible and perhaps very, very systematic use of SFNI as a vehicle for red tagging and all this vilification campaign. Let's not, again, let's not go far from our house here right now. October 11, SFNI was used in an interview with the former president 
threatening gravely your congressman, Franz Castro, napapatayin siya. That's why we filed the grave threat case against the former president. Not only that, on November 16, the former president in the same interview, in the same program hosted by the SMNI, repeated the grave threat. Okay. Now came the, uh, the subject matter of the privileged speech of the Honorable Suarez about 1.8 travel. These are all systematic trend of using that particular franchise for their own agenda. And I'm not implying anything that is political, but I am implying about the fact that there are disinformation, misinformation, fake news, and other historical revisionism being peddled on that uh, particular SMNI. Thank you, Platform. Mr. Chair. And uh, I think yes, we are establishing that, we are establishing this uh, trend, no, Mr. Chair. I'd like to reiterate my question to the good attorney, if we may know, because I'm sure MAD as a, a social civic community, community organization is monitoring this this, inf this information not only with the SMNI. So, Mr. Chair, my question is: Do we have a similar pattern of disinformation of red tagging fake news in other outlets? other media outlets, uh, some of the big names, do we have the same kind of instance or is this seemingly endemic to the SMNI? Well, in fairness to the SMNI, there are some traditional media outlets that have been guilty of red tagging. And I cannot, uh, for the moment, uh, give you all the uh, locations that have been red tagging incidents. No? But nonetheless, what is very prominent in the context of our in relevant and material to our discussion right now, what is very prominently mentioned and very, very uh, high profile would be the SFNI. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Yung high profile pala na cases nito would be, seems to be, based on our research person, endemic to the SFNI, not exclusively, but the pattern seems to be established here. So uh, we bring this up because, of course, we were talking about the Section 4 violations when it comes to deliberately false information circulating. Of course, these are not, you know, open and shut cases. But this gives, tends to give us a pattern that we can look into. And this tends to establish it. So, Mr. Chair, um, Ms. Badoy is not here, but I would like to ask the attorney, perhaps, um, if he would be familiar of how long Ms. Badoy was with the USEC of PCO. Uh, I have no personal knowledge with respect to her engagement with the former administration, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Chair. So, um, but since when was she engaged for SMNI? Uh, 2021, Mr. Chair. 2021. Any specific month, Poba? July of 2021, Mr. Chair. So July of 2021. I would assume this is still uh, a year before the election, no? So this was still in the previous administration. Yes, Mr. Chair. So Mr. Chair, maybe know uh, perhaps from the president that uh, they knowingly um, hired or perhaps engaged with Ms. Badoy as a sitting official? Or did she retire prior to the conclusion of the administration? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Yusek Lorraine Badoy has program in SMNI, Taban Kasamang Bayan. Uh, during um, the time that he, she was still the, the Yusek in the PCO spokesperson and a member of the NTF LCAP. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So there was an overlap, po, no? Yes, po. The, we see a clear transition from Ms. Badoy being a Yusek on a program of SMNI and now still being on SMNI, but as a private person. Mr. Chair, does SMNI have any means of uh, determining which statements she's making as an official and which statements she's making as a private person? Because I understand, Mr. Chair, the substance usually of the uh, of her Arctic, uh, of her uh, program would tend to revolve around this sort of systemic um, kind of information as mentioned by the lead convener of MAD. So, Mr. Chair, we'd like to know if uh, where does her official function end and the private person begin? Can I defer the question to his law, her lawyer? Mr. Chair, I'd prefer to find out... For, no, I'm asking about SMNI's practice. How do you determine the separate liability? No, actually, the, the broadcast has two kinds of uh, broadcast. There's a live and there's a um, recorded. So we cannot 
you know, if there is life, of course we cannot stop her from talking. Mr. Chair, but I believe that's actually a provision of your franchise, that it is a responsibility that you have to stop any well, broadcast. I mean, I mean, we cannot say what, uh, we cannot tell her what to say, what not to say, because she's on live. But surely, Mr. Chair, you tell her to speak as a private person. Or are you admitting here today that you were giving this airtime in an official capacity to the government of the Republic of the Philippines? No, no. So private nga po yun. Yes po. So, Mr. Chair, we have established now, because it was quite confusing during the last hearing, that she would cite government documents, especially if I recall regarding Chairman Benny Abante. She cited that I have basis to say all of these things because we have in this intelligence cluster this and that. But, Mr. Chair, uh, it's admitted now by SMNI that it is in her capacity as private person. So I think uh, something that we should consider is that this information that is spreading by virtue of their failure to segregate, when is she acting in official capacity and when is she acting in a private capacity? Because of that co-mixture, we tend to have this, this information citing certain sources which aren't supposed to be um, relevant to their private capacity. So these are some of the things that we're seeing now, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, one more question. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not so versed no, in the world of television, but... Can you explain to us yung difference po as Miss Badoy as talent and Miss Badoy as the co-producer? Mr. President of the SMNI. I would like to defer the question to our consultant. Yes. If I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, wait. Uh, uh, sir, you're acting as what? I'm acting as uh, the consultant for broadcast operations now. You are a consultant. So anything that you say here, you are authorizing, uh, Mr. President. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Lalo Mr. po tayo dyan, ha? Mamaya sabihin nyo, may disclaimer na naman kayo dun sa consultant, ha? Okay, na hindi yan official position nyo. Sir. Mr. Uh, Chair? Okay po. Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, just Come very on. quickly, so just want to confirm, as a consultant... Uh, who are you referring to? Uh, the, There's some... the one who... Volunteer to answer just yes. now. See, Mr. Sanchoba? So, uh, Mr. Sonsa. Mr. Sonsa. Mr. Chair. Papa so, no. so, Perhaps okay. not my time, Mr. Chair. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Th Apologies if I should have known. Okay. But, uh, Mr. Chair, maybe ask you, Mr. Sonsa, uh, maybe confirm that Mr. Sonsa, as consultant, has capacity to make management and executive decisions within the SMNI. Yes. A question. Uh, Mr. President, do you have that? Do you substantiate that uh, statement? Na may kapangyarihan po siya kasi ang opinion ho niya importante kung kasangayunan ninyo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Bibigyan namin ng importansya yan. Apo. Oh, yes, sige Mr. po. Chair. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank yes, you, Mr. Daw. Chair. Yes, Mr. Sonsa. Please uh, reply. Para lang po malinaw ano, sa takbo ng industriya. Uh, na... Ang status ni Ms. Badoy and Mr. Celis sa SMNI ay co-production. Yun ang pagkaka-relay sa akin. Ngayon, Sandali na po. Pakiklaro ho tayo. Po. Yung pagka-relay sa akin, kailan siguro din natin? Kasi hindi ho natin pwede. Mr. President, ito ba'y talagang co-production? Yes, Mr. Chair. Co-production, okay. Mr. Sonsa, co-production, okay. So, co-production, okay. so, co marami ho kasing klase ang co-production. Co-production ng gasto sa pagpuproduce ng show, co-production ng hatian sa benta, co-production na ang hawak lang ng network ay yung technical component plus the airtime at yung hawak ng co-producer ay yung content provision. Okay. From... Uh, Itong sa kaso nila Mr. Celis at ni Ms. Badoy, ang responsibilidad ng SMNI, yung TOC, Technical Operations, at saka yung airtime. Okay. Uh, pagkatapos, kung magkakabentahan, siguro magkakahatian. No? Pero wala naman benta sila, so walang hatiin. Ngayon, yung content, dahil sa interactive yung concept ng kanilang programa, Tuloy-tuloy yung broadcast. Apo. However, kapag ka merong magkakamali sa broadcast, that is the time we will call their attention 
and if necessary, we impose the sanction. Okay. Okay. Now, doon po sa tanong kanina ni Congressman uh, Toby Chanco, uh, binago na po natin yung grievance committee, gumawa na po tayo ng editorial board ngayon at saka ng ombudsman sa loob ng SMNI. So alimbawa, meron po ng observation, sila ang emang mad. O, tapos, magsasubmit sila ng complaint. Yan po ay asikasuhin ng editorial board. Katulad po ng nangyari kay Mr. Celis ngayon na sana ipapaliwanag ko kanina, nung uh, mangyari po yon investigahan. Kaya lang, naudlot yung investigasyon, gawa ng dito mismo, inamin niya na meron po siyang pagkakamali. That is why, uh, sanction have to be imposed. And the, uh, we have now the official sanction which we can provide the committee with wh what the actions taken by SMNI in so far as Celis is concerned. Which is? Which is suspension. How long? Bigyan nyo na kami ng copy. Opo, meron po. Uh, can we have a copy, uh, Mr. J. Sonsa? Opo, opo. Hey, been... Mr. Sonsa. Opo. Hindi po, ilan, ilan taon na ba tumatakbo itong programa ni Eric at saka ni Lorraine? Mga... May git 2 years na, no? Okay, may tanong po ako. Opo. Kung yan ay co-production at ang oras, ilaw, ang airtime sa inyo. Opo. Ang talent, sila. Ang content. Kanila, ang content, po. sila. Opo. At silang anchor. Co-production eh. Co-production. Doon tayo, ha? Opo. Kasi tama kayo, marami iba-iba co-production. Question. 2 years na tumatakbo yung programa. Mm -hmm. Walang kita. Mm -hmm. Paano po sila? Kasi nga po ganito, yung konsepto nung... Paano sila nakakapag-tiis ng dalawang taon na wala silang benta, pero araw-araw banat sila ng banat? Yung banat po nila, hindi ko masasagot. Okay. Hindi, pero... Pag sabi nagkatrabaho po sila, yun po okay. ibig ko sabihin. Ngayon, doon po sa ano... Nagkatrabaho po sila. Kung titingnan po ninyo yung, yung konsepto ng pagtatayo ng SMNI, Eh, talagang para sa bayan. Sagutin na po na, paano po nila nagagawa yun? Yun ang tanong ko. Kasi it does not make sense. Opo. Co-prod. Si, co-prod, pero sa kanila oras, pag sinabi yung co-prod, hati eh. Oras sa kanila, Opo. ilaw, lahat sa inyo, technical, mm -hmm. sila talento mm -hmm. at saka content. Yun lang. Opo. Okay? Kasi doon nga kayo nagkatago doon sa waiver, waiver eh. Alam ko naman kung sa kayo pupunta. Pero sige, let's lumunod tayo sa issue ng coprod. Na pinapalabas yung coprod to, ergo, hindi namin sagutin kung ano sasabihin nila. Kasi coprod eh. Nagkatago kayo. Hmm. Hindi nyo tinawag black timer, hindi nyo tinawag iba. Ang sinabi nyo, coprod. Okay. Benta, hati. Two years, walang benta. Sila po, wala, wala po wala, sila. Po, in short, wala sa income. Opa. Hindi po kaya pinapaswerdohan ng SMNI sila. Kaya nabubuhay sila mas kaya walang revenue. Sweldo, wala, wala akong alam na sweldo. Hindi. Kung Mr. honorario... Chair, hindi, can we, SMNI, can you please answer? Kung uh, sweldo mas kaya sa inyo, hindi. Mr. Chair, point of clarification. Yes. Yes. The honorable, uh, yes. Before Just that, the Honorable Gomez was uh, wanted to be acknowledged. But before that, so may sweldo ba o hindi? Attorney, talent, sagot lang muna. Talent fee, Mr. Chair. Meron. Talent fee, not okay. sweldo. Okay. Isang dandy bo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Isang sagot siya. Uh, per our co-production agreement, oh. and the copy of the co-production agreement is already with the committee, Mr. Chair. Okay, the Honorable Gomez and the Honorable J.J. Suarez. Mr. Chair, would it be possible that the, the President answer your questions? Okay. Kasi siya yung talaga na, dapat nakaka-oversee ng lahat ng operations ng network. Hindi mo naman tinatapon sa consultant mo lang yun. Consultant, binibigyan ka lang ng tip kung ano pwede mong gawin. But, you know, if your day-to-day -day operations, it should be the person who should answer you. Yeah, he's the responsible yeah. person of that network. Thank you very much, uh, Donable Gomez. Donable J.J. Suarez. Yes, um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Actually, I do share the sentiments of uh, uh, Representative Gomez regarding the uh, who should be the one to answer. With respect lang dito kay Mr. Sonsa, Sir, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you're serving as consultant for SMNI. Um, yes, sir. Yes. Sir, when did you begin your consultancy with SMNI? Just recently, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just? Just recently. How long? How long ago, sir? <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. March Sponsor. 20, yeah. Akin po? To be exact, March 20. March 20. March, March 20. Um, do you have any documents that could uh, attest yes. to your concern? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you please submit this? We to will submit it, Mr. Chairman. Submit it off before and the day ends. Huh? We will. Thank and you very much. And as consultant, Mr. Sonsak, would you be kind enough to share? Um, are you receiving any monetary benefits from SMNI? Are you? Yes, Mr. Chair. And would you be kind enough to um, detail to us uh, how much you're receiving as consultant? Uh, the record would speak for itself, Mr. Chairman. We will submit the record. Okay. Can you um, just uh, tell us, since there's a record, just tell us. It's a sizable amount, Mr. Chairman. Which is? This is a million. How much? A million. Per? Per month. Per, per month. Yes. Thank you very much. So if the documents are there, Mr. Sonsa, can you... Okay. Mr. Sonsa, since the documents are there, can you be... Silence is requested. Honorable J.J. Suarez yes. has the floor. I think um, you referred to some documents that you were looking at, Mr. Sonsa. Can you please furnish the... Yes, we will. Yes, okay. Because... Mr. Chairman. Um, I, we just wanted to determine whether uh, your consultancy and how long you have been a consultant. Because we've been having these hearings for the past three weeks, at ngayon lang po kayo lumitaw kaya medyo nakakagulat po ang pagdalo niyo sa komitiba. But nevertheless, marami marami salamat po sa mga ibinahagi niyo. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. JJ Suarez. Mr. Chair. Donable Toby Jam. Again, with the indulgence of Congressman Gutierrez. Um, kailan po nagsimula yung uh, grievance committee tsaka yung internal ombudsman ng uh, SMNI? President, Mr. President, kailan po sumagot? Pag ikaw, alam niyo naman po yan. Oh, Mr. President, why are you consulting the someone consultant. else? <laughs> the President is consulting the consultant. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, yes. kasi yung transition period po, ngayon po ginawa namin ang grievance. Uh, gi po, gi okay. Anyway, Mr. President. So, Mr. Chair, so ngayon, um, for the record, ngayon lang po sisimulan yung grievance committee tsaka yung internal ombudsman. Yes po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if I may. Na suspend si Eric kung ngayon yun ang po binubuo yan. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> ba nakakapagtaka? Nagbubuo kayo ng wala pa kayong grupo, wala pa kayong formal structure, tapos wala kayong rules, tapos suspendi nyo na si Eric ng isang ano sa isang buwan, isang taon. Wala pa? Hmm. Paano, nyo, paano nyo ginawa yun? Actually po, Mr. Chair, nasa manual po yung B1 uh, committee po. Oh, sa so, yeah, pero tinatanong namin, alam po ninyo, di tayo matatapos po kung hindi tayo magdiretsuhan. Sabi nyo kanina, wala. Nagbubuo pa kayo in transition. Pero may mga nasuspindi na kayo. Paano po yan? Paano nyo nagagawa yan? Huh? Eh, mas kasi sa manual yan. Kung na naman buhay yung hmm? manual, papel ho yan. Eh, no? Pero you have to put life to that piece of paper. And you have not. And you've suspended it already, Ka Eric. So where's due process there? Mr. Chair. And... No, no, be an, an, baka magkaroon ng NLRC question pa. No, yes, nung, tina, nung po tinanong natin si um, Attorney Tolentino nun, ang sabi po niya, wala silang, wala silang grievance, meron sila ethics board. Di ba kaya nga napunta doon sa sino ang composition ng ethics board? Tapos ngayon po, sinasabi nila na sa manual nila. Pero nung, tinanong, nung sagot po nila last week, wala po sila noon. Oh, so alin po okay. ba talaga ang... Totoo doon. Kailan ba talaga nagsimula yung okay. grievance committee tsaka kailan po talaga nagsimula yung kanilang internal ombudsman okay. research here? The veteran uh, lawmaker is raising his hand. Thank you, Your Honor. To save Attorney Rolex. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, we are, in the process. we are transitioning from the grievance committee to the ethics committee. In the case of Ka Eric uh, Selis, I understand that it's still the grievance committee. Now, we have the, the members and the, uh, the constitution of the grievance committee. And they met. They met to uh, determine the case of uh, Ka Eric Selis. Okay. So anyway, Attorney Rolex, medyo, uh, anyway, 
may si chair last na lang po. The honor of Kobe Janko. Parang yung, yung hindi lagpas, ko maintindihan yun. Hindi, lag, lagpas 10 minutes na po. Yung kopya po nung sus, um, reprimand kay um, uh, Professor Badoy. Yes. Or maybe have the copy of the reprimand. 10 minutes has passed. We're supposed to, you're supposed to vibe well. Uh, Ma'am, Board of Director. Di ba, meron po kayo dapat i-submit. Yes po. We're follow up. Sorry. Okay. Well, we will not, uh, ano ha, hindi natin tapos itong araw ito. Ng Mr. Chairman. Pakibig <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, the Honorable uh, Joe Poy. Uh, wait. Mr. Chairman. Can, can... Let's make it clear. The, the Honorable uh, Ramon Gutierrez still has the floor. Are you done? Uh, Mr. Question? Chair, not yet, but I Because could... Because uh... you've given way to everybody, but are you done? But naman, Mr. Chair, my next line of questioning would be picking up from a previous question. So okay lang naman, Mr. Chair. I okay. defer to the good... Yes, uh, because uh, we will have already to go for the vote na, of the uh, resolution. That's why I'm just allowing all of this discussion for clarity so that uh, we will be clear as to uh, uh, how the members will vote in today's uh, hearing for the committee report. Though this has been approved, we're just talking about the committee report here. Yes, the Honorable Joe Yes, Joe Point. Mr. Chairman, can we request for a copy of the contract uh, that was uh, manifested earlier between, uh, they said it was two years ago, diba? Two years ago pa yung si Badoy and uh, Ka Eric. Can we have a copy of their contract which started Two years ago. Okay, can we have a copy of the, the employment contract or the co-production co contract or whatever contract you have with uh, for this program? Yeah, because I, okay. I remember Badoy was, uh, okay. Badoy was still copy? with uh, the contract, Mr. Chair. Is already uh, Mr. Chair. Oh, meron na po sinabit dito. No, iba yung andito because if if we will use this, sinasabi dito, nag-start yung contract nila is July, oh wait, wait. Ngayon lang, 2023, and it is good for one year. So, can we have the previous contract? Uh, okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Attorney Tarantino. Okay, salamat oh, po. And when can they submit that? Can you please submit that already by, tom by, not by tomorrow? Okay, because Mr. Chair. You have tomorrow, to Mr. Chair. Okay? Can tomorrow, you? Tomorrow, Mr. Chair, we will submit that. To the, Thank you very much. Okay. We will hold you to that. Uh, to, we're listing down lahat ng mga kailangan nyo i-submit. Okay. okay. Now, Wait. The Honorable, uh, can we now proceed to the proponent? Ah, wait. Uh, yes, the Honorable uh, Kimbo. Just a short manifestation, Mr. Chair. Um, the Manual of Operations had been um, repeatedly mentioned, um, but just um, for the record, um, so I'm looking at it now, um, supposedly based on the table of contents, it's supposed to have 221 pages, but what they had submitted is only 38 pages. Um, and uh, indeed, there are ethical principles which they are supposed to follow, which includes the handling of sources. Um, but there's nothing on suspension. There's nothing on penalties. So kung nasuspinde si Mr. So Mr. Sellis, hindi natin alam kung ano ang ginamit na pasihan or rules. Okay. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Okay. Please take note of that. And uh, uh, oh. Bakit may hinahawak kasi Mr. Sonson mas makapal na dokumento na yun? Ato, every time hihingin kami, may nilalapas kayo no, no, no. bagong uh, dokumento. I was supposed to submit this actually. Okay, can you please this, submit that now? Yeah. Come sec. Okay, that will answer the question. The, okay, now... The, yes. The See, copy the, the, I think, let us understand. That's a, yes. So, let us uh, be clear, no? May, may tanong nga pala ako. Bakit ho kayo may hawak ng dokumento? Hindi ho si Presidente. Sino ang inabuto sa inyo? Okay. okay. Katabi ko po yung corporate secretary. So okay. Yung... The corpsec is beside the consultant. Okay. If the corpsec was beside the president, then it would have been the president to manifest. Mr. Okay. Chair, para moving target itong ginagawa natin. Correct. That's why, alam po nyo, <laughs> yan yung problema pag peace meet eh. That's why hindi yung natin araw. Lahat ang hihingi namin, kailangan isabit yung agad before the next hearing. Kung hindi, May na na like, na submission nyo. We don't have time to review this, all these documents, especially voluminous as that. Yes, we now proceed. Can we now proceed? The, are you done already? Can we now move to the last question? Okay. Yes, Mr. Ramon, Chair. The, the Honorable Gutierrez has his final question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, as I was establishing earlier with if the whole crowd, which was mentioned, actually, yes. uh, prop I was moving towards that, properly elucidated by the good chairman, Tambunting. 
questionable po yung uh, kanilang two years na wala pa lang kita, it is still continuing. So it begs the question like, why do we have this program? What is the strategic goal that is in mind? Is it to perpetuate this kind of content? Yung tanong po namin, Mr. Chef, is, uh, initially we'd think that this kind of program should be for profit and as their franchise is for profit. But Mr. Chair, so with that, I'd like to ask if the ComSec could briefly flash the resource uh, indicated by Kong Dan Fernandez earlier, yung expenses nila. So Mr. Chair, uh, based on the expenses in SM9, very clear, walang kita yon, And they said that with the COPROD, they are sponsoring the expenses of that program and talent fee po yung Correct. binibigay. Yeah, Ms. Badoy, bakit po blanco yung talent fee natin dito? For 2022, which was at the time already... Um, yeah. And uh, aside from this, so Mr. Chair, two questions po, no? Kung may talent fees po talaga si Ms. Badoy and si Mr. Celis, bakit wala po dito sa financial statements nila? And now I would like to ask also, papasok ba ito sa legal and professional fees? 100,000 a month po yun, di ba? So 800,000 for the whole year of 2022. No, but it's uh, 100,000 each. 100,000 uh, each pa. Yeah. And then where are we going to see now the 1 million per month ni our good consultant? I have questions about the veracity of the documents they've been submitting. We have questions about the financial statements that they've been submitting. We have questions about their franchise. Mr. Chair, we see now this pattern of violations, Section 4, Section 10, 11, 12. Parang wala na gagawang tama. So, Mr. Chair, I actually still have questions on the GIS. Uh, fortunately for us, the CorpSec, Ms. Nupomoseno is here, but... Uh, in the spirit of uh, brevity, I will now concede. I will just question in the second round. So I will now turn the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, the Honorable uh, Ramon Gutierrez. Now, for the uh, proponent of the uh, resolution, the uh, Honorable uh, Mig Zograles. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So before we vote the, to approve the yes. resolution... She has the final... Uh, this is the final one before the vote. To approve the committee report based on the resolution as amended that we adopted last uh, hearing, no? which is to simply naman urge the NTC uh, to suspend the operations of SOARA so based on its violations of their franchise. May I just ask, be allowed to ask some clarificatory questions? Yes, please. So this is to um, uh, Please take note, uh, Attorney Tolentino, there are clarificatory questions to be asked by the Honorable uh, Mig Sugrales. So in our previous hearings, we already established that Suarez Sog is actually a monopoly. Kita naman po natin sa pie chart na nilabas po uh, of the Kingdom of Jesus. And um, as well with any of the lawyers, uh, it's part of your due diligence to know the membership of the major stockholder of your corporation, correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. May I know how many members uh, the Kingdom of Jesus um, has today? The, the Kingdom of... I am... I, no? I cannot answer that, Mr. Chair. I am the lawyer of SMNI, not the executive pastor. You just of the mentioned earlier you, it's part of your due diligence, diba? Sanabi mo my due diligence as every lawyer to I'll know try the to answer, Mr. Chair, to the best of my knowledge, Mr. Chair. But to be honest, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair I have no personal knowledge to the number of members, but I know it's about mi more than millions, Mr. Chair. Okay. Well, I did my due diligence. So, meron naman po kami kayong website. Pakita po na lang natin yung screenshot ng website. Okay. Maybe have the screenshot. So, it says in the screenshot of the website where Pastor Kibolo is there, no? You have 7 million worldwide, no? And congregations in Asia, North America, South and Central America, Europe, Africa, and Australia. Um, so, ang laki, 7 million followers worldwide, members worldwide, and uh, um, I, sobrang laki niyan. On what occasions, Mr. Chair, do uh, these members get together? Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, I am not a member of the church, so I have no personal knowledge. I am just a lawyer of SMNI, Mr. Chair. I am not the lawyer of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But I admit, Mr. Chair, that Pastor Apollo Sikibolo is my friend, Mr. Chair. Okay. 
since uh, dinidiin naman, uh, hindi niya sinasagot po. Mm. Okay. Um, so, since dinidiin naman po yung corporation sold, uh, gusto niya tayong turuan no? In 2006, when you converted from a non-stock corporation to a corporation sold, how many members would you have back then? How many members did you have back then? As a corporation sold, Mr. Chairman, from the word sold, there's only one person involved, Mr. Chair, holding the properties of the corporation as a trustee per Section 108 of the Mr. Chair, I'm asking code. about the members. No, no, we have to understand. Uh, this is one person representing a, se a religious sector. A religious sector. Yes, Mr. Chair. Ilan, ilan yun? That's why, Mr. Chair, you have no personal knowledge with respect to the numbers, but I can give estimate, Mr. Chair, Which more is? than millions, Mr. Chair. Okay, more than Seven millions. million, more or less, but it includes also the sympathizers, Mr. Chair, worldwide, Mr. Chair. Okay, that's in 2006, correct? <laughs> yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so let's just say, what's what's two-thirds of seven million, Mr. Chair? Seven million, two-thirds? Yes. That's around four million. Uh, around four million? Okay. Yes. Um, and when the, you amended your AOI from a non-stock to a corporation sole, were you able to convene these 4 million members from all around the world? Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to manifest that there was no amendment from, from <coughs> stock to corporation sole, Mr. Chair. Okay. For a record, Mr. Chair. Okay. Can we show na lang po the GIS that you... You, in your certificate of filing of amendment of articles of incorporation, did not, didn't you change from a, from your non-stock to a, a cor to a corporation sole? Napaulit ulit yung binibigyan ng, uh, ba? Ninalabas corporation sole, corporation sole. Ngayon, are you recanting? What is the good lawyer recanting now that he is? There's, there's no corporation sole. There's no amendment. Parang nililito po tayo, Mr. Chair. So I just. Can, can we Attorney, I think that's clarify? a uh, misdeclaration. Your statement earlier with this document. So based on my personal knowledge, Mr. Chair. We're not no, no, asking. This is a document that you submitted. These are documents already. I mean, you know, uh, alam po ninyo, pag sinabi yung, tinan nyo na yung dokumento para maging tugma. Anyway, so, kita naman po natin may dokumento na they submitted, No. Um, so again, two thirds of the membership, you have seven million on an estimate, is four million. And now you're saying you don't know how they convened or whatsoever. Walang pictures of this milestone to have four million. It's such a big diba, event all over the world. So, may you know the question, Mr. Chair? Do question, you have any proof? Do you have that any proof that you've you know the membership? That is, all, that is an estimate, Mr. Chair. No, no, it, no. We're talking. We're talking of any proof that uh, you convened. Yes, because have, as stated here in your certificate of filing of amended articles of incorporation, which you submitted to the SEC and you submitted to Congress as part of your repertorial requirements on November eight, you got the vote of at least two thirds of the members of the corporation, right? Mr. Chair, yes. And uh, this is to 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 uh, amend to to make uh, I am the, it a corporation. So, uh, attorney, I only answered that, Mr. Chair, that I'm not the lawyer of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'm the lawyer of SMNI, Mr. Chair. I have no personal knowledge about the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, Mr. Chair. But I have a question. Don't you think you should have wor uh, some working knowledge about this, since this year representing SMNI, of which? Uh, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the sole corporation, is part of, or majority of. I mean, how can you detach yourself from that argument, di ba? Na dapat hindi ko kayo pwede magtago ron eh. Kasi, we do diligence yan. As a lawyer, you come here, you're supposed to come here prepared and have the answers. And you can't waste the time of all the resource persons, and including the members of Congress. Sorry for that, Mr. Chair. Yes, that's why, you know, if you keep on saying that you are not, I mean, you should, boss, third hearing na po natin to. You should be prepared to answer these questions already. Tapos, you, there's another lawyer that comes in just to deliver a letter. So, I mean, I, I don't understand. Uh, you have to be able to answer these questions. The question of the Honorable Nograles is, do you have any photo to show that the executive of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the sole corporation, convened? Because as per the amended articles, you did convene. Attorney Rolex, bakit kayo may sagot? 
Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, we have discussed this when it, when questions would touch on the on the executive pastor of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, Inc. Yes. We only have the certificate of filing of amended articles for 2023 and the previous one, 20. Mr. Chair, since they 20, are dodging. Uh, uh, 22. Yes. Yes, you still have the floor. Go ahead. Your, your Honor. We so are, are you able to answer the question? We are about engaged it. only by SMNI, Your Honor. And later on, during but, the second hearing, uh, we agreed to be lawyers for uh, Ms. Badoy and Mr. Selis, but not for the executive pastor. Your Honor. This yes, but you know, these are already amendments to the incorporation, the corporation that controls the SMNI. Now, hindi po dapat alam niyo ang sagot ito. Your Honor, how, can you, how, how, how can you how can you say that you don't have working knowledge and come here and we talk about this? How can how can there be an intelligent discussion with a resource persons? Mr. And Chair, how can you defend SMNI? Your Honor, if you do not know a basic question as far as this particular sole corporation. With your respect, Your Honor, we are called here to answer for uh, one the alleged 1.8 billion uh, travel expenses expenditures of the speaker. Number two, the uh, uh, red tagging uh, allegedly made in a program in SMNI. Well, Mr. very Chair, good, Attorney Mr. Rolex. Chair, but I, I do not know, have I will... any knowledge on what happened in 2006 but when the vote was taken. Would you respect your honor? Mr. Chair, please. Attorney, get on up. You also yes, called honor. here to defend SMNI. And in SMNI, there is a sole corporation of this nature. That's why we're just asking you, you cannot escape from the fact that this has to be part of your job to be able to justify their very existence. You cannot say that what ni po ko abogado niyan. Then, pwede niyo sabihin, lahat yan, di ako abogado except SMI. Ang problema, marami hong tao at maraming korporasyon na kukontrol ko sa SMNI. Eh. So, kailangan, hindi po dapat, I mean, if there was a reversal, kayo po ako po rito at ako po dyan, at ako po yung abogado, hindi ba dapat, alam ko rin yan. Definitely, the view there is better than the view here, Your Honor. Thank you very much. At least we're, we're, we're clear, Attorney Rolex. <laughs> but you know, I once, I once sat over there for nine years. Your I Honor. know, and I used to watch you. And I knew you would ask questions like this too. <laughs> okay? At din yung pinaparusot yung mga, yung mga resource persons pag hindi tama yung sagot. The Honorable Nograres. Mr. Chair, klaro ko lang Thank po. Thank you, Your Honor. No, um, sanabi po kasi ni Attorney Suplico na they're being called here for, you know, the, this, ano, yung mga red tagging. Oh. Sa agenda A. Sa agenda B tayo, we're talking about the resolution here. Yes. To clarify lang po. And which you are still also the lawyers for you know, SMNI on this resolution, which is simply to urge NTC to suspend because of violations of your franchise. Correct, Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. So, iklaro po natin, let's not mislead right now what's happening. Hindi naman po ako yung nag-file nun. Pinag-uusapan natin ang resolution na final ko to urge NTC to suspend if we find na violations. Okay. And in any case, since they did not do their due diligence as lawyers, um, there is section 114 of their vice corporation code. And nandito naman din yung SEC na I can ask them questions if you cannot answer the questions of a major stockholder. Yes, you see. Right. Oh, so, um, are you addressing this now? Um, wait, wait, Attorney Tolentino. I am... Pwede bang tapusin po natin si Congressman Nograris? Di ho kayo pwede pumasok. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Saray po kasi you, siyang until, ganyan, Because Mr. you know, kanina nagsasalta, puro hindi nyo alam. Na yun naman na bibigyan nyo, ibabanda nyo si iba, tatanungin nyo at papasok ulit kayo. Pwede bang tapusin muna ni Congressman Nograle? Congresswoman Nograle, yung line of question po Sorry niya. for that, Mr. Bago ko kayo pagbigyan, ha? So, yes, Honorable Nograle, para ho maging orderly yung proceeding at saka maintindihan ho natin yung issues. Honorable Nograle. So, Section 114 of the Revised Corporation Code, which embodies the rules for corporation soul since gusto naman po nila tayong turuan tungkol sa corporation soul, explicitly requires that at least two-thirds of the membership will give its written consent or has voted to incorporate at a duly convened meeting of the body. SEC, tama po ba, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, SEC, please answer the question. That is correct, Mr. Chair. 
And even um, jurisprudence, Iglesia Evangelista versus Bishop Lazaro, GR number 184088, July 6, dated July 6, 2010, states, even an amendment as well requires two-thirds of its membership, the vote or the written consent of its membership that convenes for that sole purpose. SEC. Correct. That, that's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Dito po, makikita natin sa pag-file pa lang nila ng Certificate of Amendment of Articles. That's why I highlighted it. It says two-thirds of the members of the corporation, which is not membership and violative of Section 114. Is this correct, uh, as, uh, Mr. Chair, to SEC? That appears to be the case, Mr. Chair. Yes. But, but of course, alam naman po natin, mandatory, I mean, May, may mga submissions yun ng documents and you have to, SEC has to, um, uh, if nagbigay sila ng documents, kailangan naman pong, uh, di ba, uh, i-approve. Yes. Right? So, can we show na lang the next slide? Next slide, please. So, they have a trustee certificate which is notarized. No? Sworn. There's an oath there. Sabi naman po na contradictory to the first page of the submission, this is attached to the uh, uh, 2006 amendment. Meron naman silang two-thirds of the members in a special meeting called for that purpose and jointly held on November 8, 2006. Um, so I, I've been looking through the website. Wala mo po kasing pictures, walang anything. So if SMNI na lang po can furnish us a copy of a photo or proof of the notice Kasi 2006, wala pang, hindi pa pwede yung mga Zoom-Zoom pang ano, board meetings. So dapat, di ba, nakita yan, ha? magkasama-sama sila to, on November 8, specifically, especially for that, that they called the meeting. I'm really hoping SMNI would be able to uh, submit such documents or proof. Because if not, um, hindi po ba to SEC, this is grounds for cancellation because SEC. of fraud. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, any document that uh, appears to be fraudulent or uh, fault, or contains a uh, false statement uh, submitted in support of a uh, filing of um, articles of incorporation or any amendment that constitutes fraud in the procurement and be, may be cancelled, Mr. Chair. So, mukhang kahit yung SEC, binibigan nila ng uh, iba ibang requirements, I mean, the documents na contradictory to each other. Yes. The first statement on the first page of the GIS, and mas malala, if they cannot prove this, Mr. Chair, this is already criminally, this is a criminal offense for perjury because this is under oath. The same as the document submitted to us na iba po ang sinabit sa atin sa Kongreso, uh, na nalaman po natin today, and sa SEC, eh di po, uh, fraud po yun. Um, so, to clarify lang po then with SEC, para malaman po natin within the purview of SEC anong definition ng fraud. Meron po kasi akong nabasang administrative case uh, number 03-15-173 um, on Nature's Garden Park versus Enforcement and Investor Protection De Department where you define fraud within the purview of SEC to be uh, fraud as actual or constructive. And in the same case, you mentioned that any material statement made by an incorporator in its articles of incorporation or amendment that in turns out to be falsehood um, would be considered fraudulent. And again, yung, yung fraudulent na to, regardless of the incorporator's intent or knowledge of such, such falsehood, correct, Mr. Chair? Yes, that, that's correct, see. Mr. Chair. Correct, Mr. Essentially, pag mag good faith na naman na argument, no, that they, they didn't know, they didn't comply, it's still going to fall as fraud within the definition of SEC. Correct? SEC. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Thank and you. fraud in submission nga, even if they say good faith, is a ground to cancel such amendment or certificate of registration. Correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Proceed. Um, may I ask, and um, with this uh, cancellation, no? uh, may I ask lang, um, NPC naman po, Mr. Chair. Please proceed. 
Um, for NTC, it is within the power of the NTC to issue certificates of public convenience for operation of communications of radio and television broadcasting system, correct? Uh, that is correct, Your Honor. And corollary to this power and to your regulatory powers, does NTC also have the power to suspend such certificate, license, or permits? Proceed. If the violations are directly in not uh, are directly in violation of the CPC that the NTC issued, then the NTC may consider may consider your honor. But we take into account also the other jurisprudences on on in, in light of this. Thank so, you. So uh, essentially, Mr. Chair, I just want we just want to clarify from NTC. If we see violations now that we're seeing several violations within, especially the franchise of Suarez. So, and even if we dig deeper and see more violations, uh, does, does NTC have the power to suspend while we're looking into violations? At magkakarutukan po na lalabas po ang violations, Mr. Chair. Uh, Your Honor, we will uh, we will be uh, evaluating very carefully the 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 resolutions and whatever that the this committee may. They come up with to and we take into account also the existing mandate that we have and the corresponding jur jurisprudence. Yes, Mr. simply Chair. that's why our resolution is to urge NTC. No, so to enlighten lang everyone, I suppose let's run through na lang po the violations. First, the ba yung ground naman po ng pag urge natin sa NTC dahil may violations sa sa franchise. Um, claro naman po kanina pa that we have next next slide please on their franchise which is RA11422 section 4 uh, must violated not to use the uh, station or facilities for dissemination or of deliberately false information or willful misrepresentation to the detriment of the public interest Okay, next slide. Last meeting, of course, we established this with this whole con shift of the controlling interest, no? Um, and again, this would hit another provision in their franchise, which is on the next slide. Section 10, which we have established that there is no prior approval in the transfer of the controlling interest. And then that's the first sentence of section 10. The next slide, please. There's also a violation on the requirement to report within uh, 60 days from the transfer of the controlling interest. Um, so, punta tayo sa mukang ngayon dahil sa nakita natin no, that the latest GIS statement that they submitted uh, to us is different. Is different. Uh, the one 2021 po ba yun? 2021 GIS submitted to us on the reportorial requirement is different from the one that they submitted to um, SEC. Mukhang ngayon may violation na rin po sa section 12. Um, which, if I may direct this committee lang to section 12 on the reportorial requirements um one, two. On the third paragraph, actually, the second paragraph, the annual report shall include an update on the rollout, development, operation, or expansion of business, audited financial statements, latest general information sheet officially submitted to SEC. So, bakit po iba ang sinabit sa atin at iba ang official sinabit po nila sa SEC? Certification of the NTC on the status of its permits and operations and an update on the dispersal of ownership undertaking if applicable. The next, pa the next paragraph, the reportorial compliance certificate issued by Congress shall be required before an application for permit, certificate, or any equivalent thereof is accepted by the NTC. So ngayon mukhang pumasok na meron na rin pong violation ng Section 12. So, hindi pa po tayo tapos. Um, like... We showed earlier, ay, last hearing, next slide please, nalabas ko po ulit na lang yung pie chart, um, that essentially, 53.46% no, 
is the executive pastor, Phoebus Holdings is 46.22. E Phoebus Holdings naman, about 97% is owned by executive pastor na, di ba, nung 2022 naman, na-establish natin na si pastor po ang talagang may control naman. So, equivalently, may 98.37% na share talaga si executive pastor. So, but makikita po natin na ang um, cooperative na wala rin po doon sa kanilang franchise na ginawa nila to comply after 29 years of existence ay 0.19 lang po. Ang layo-layo ng 30% um, requirement nila to offer the public um, sa dispersal of ownership clause nila. And they only did this two years ago, after 29 years of existence, Mr. Chair. Diba, sinabi po naman, Mr. Chair, nila, that they were, they are complying. And may good faith na naman. Pero, questionable na gusto pala nila comply. Eh, two years ago lang nila kinomply after 29 years of existence. Medyo, diba, nakaka, ano, Mr. Chair, nakakapagduda. Diba? But even with that, we'll show the next slide. So, dahil hindi umabot sa 30%, meron violation on Section 11. Okay. More than even the franchise, nakikita natin tuloy-tuloy yung mga violations nila. Even with the Constitution. Next slide, please. Because we've established that there's monopoly um, on Article 12. Section 19, the state shall regulate or prohibit monopolies when public interest so requires. No combinations in restraint of trade of trade or unfair competition shall be allowed. Next slide. Hindi lang isa na violation and the highest law of the land, which is the Constitution. Pati rin po ang Section, 16, uh, section 11, Article 16, that Congress shall regulate or prohibit monopolies in commercial mass media. Uh, mukhang tinatamaan na rin po na... Kailangan natin din tingnan to. Kaya nga, di ba, nakikita natin may mga violations. Not even with the Constitution. Let's also go to the KBP Broadcast Code, which they only withdrew their membership on December 4, 2023. So they cannot now wash their hands and say that all other violations uh, that they did prior to that does not ap apply to them. So next slide. Article 1 of the KBP Broadcast Code on Section 3, Fairness and Objectivity. News reports shall be fair, factual, and objective. Okay, next slide. Meron then on Section 4 on news sources. The only news that can be attributed to a source shall be aired. News must be uh, clearly identified. You know, these there are violations here. Na, naklaro naman, di ba, na Mr. Chair, correct, um, na umami naman po na may mga violations at hindi nag-comply at hindi na-verify. Tama po, Mr. Chair. Not just Section 4. The next slide. Meron pa pong personal attacks na <laughs> bawal po na nalabas po naman nila Honorable Manuel and Honorable uh, Castro kanina po. Next slide. Meron din Article 5 naman kung sinasabi nila nagkakamali. Uh, when a mistake has been broadcast, um, it must be acknowledged and rectified as soon as possible. At ngayon nang sila nagsasabi ng sorry dahil nag-iimbestiga po tayo, parang bakit ganun po, ba? Meron din, Article 13 ng KBP Broadcast Code. So persons who regularly go on air shall be required to obtain accreditation. Okay. Some of the uh, SMNI hosts were not KBP accredited. Correct, Mr. Chair. Uh, ako nga po, hindi nga po ako KBP accredited. Sinasabi na dati po kong co-host, kaya, kaya nga po umalis. Kasi mukhang may mga violations tayong nakita. So, I can attest to that veracity na some hosts really are not accredited. Okay. Then we have another article sa KBP Broadcast Code, Article 33. The Universal Ethical Standards. Ang dami po kaya sa KBP Broadcast Code. Hindi lang po yun. Uh, Mr. Chair, meron din po sa sarili nating house rules. Para maklaro lang kung bakit, di ba, na site for contempt. Pakita po natin ang next slide. 
for sure naman when the Honorable Pimentel and the Honorable Abante moved for uh, to cite uh, the two individuals for contempt, syempre mabigat yun sa loob. Pero trabaho din po natin na kailangan to maintain the integrity of um, this Honorable Committee of Congress ay pag may lumalabag sa batas at may lumalabag sa house rules natin, it is our duty to move for those para hindi tayo niloloko. Ayun eh, naman po din gusto natin, hindi tayo maloko po, di ba? And so, to emphasize that there are violations naman po talaga which we cited, which the Honorable Congressman cited, which is Section 11C on refusal to answer any relevant inquiry, which today we also heard nga, yun naman, di ba? Yung dahilan kung bakit uh, na-cite in contempt po. And also, acting in a disrespectful manner towards any member of the committee or any misbehavior in the presence of the committee. And then, next slide. Today, now we see maybe there's a violation na rin with SEC that SEC might should start looking into. Because merong hindi pagtutugma-tugma ang kanilang pagbibigay ng dokumento sa pag-apply ng kanilang amendment, that would be detrimental now to their pinangahawa kanilang corporation soul sila. Eh, kung mawalan sila ng certificate niyan, yung amendment to begin with, wala pala. Balik sila sa non-stock. So, mawawala yung argument nila. So, kailangan po ata talagang tingnan nila yan. And tingnan po rin ng SEC. Hindi lang po yung NTC na. No? And to, again, uh, the next slide, babalik ko, na may violation din sa revised corporation code. So, in the event then that there is that they find fraud in the amendment of AOI of of uh, the kingdom of Jesus, the executive kingdom of Jesus, no? Let's go back to the pie chart. Ano mangyayari? Diba? Pareho pa rin yung numero. Kasi, kung magiging non-stock sila, babalik sila sa kingdom of Jesus na hindi corporation soul at mas malala kasi non-stock sila, 98.37% pa rin. Kasi, essentially, the 53.46 and the 44.91 ay magiging kingdom of Jesus na non-stock. And, obviously, diba, monopolistic siya which is violative of so many things. So, ngayon, with, uh, meron pa din po, next, na mukhang even the first hearing, we have established that meron ang pending administrative case filed against SMNI for red tagging and misusing uh, of their platform. Um, tama po, uh, Mr. Chair sa NTC. Uh, there's a pending. Please um, reply to the inquiry of the Honorable. Grant. Yes, uh, yes, Your Your Honor, Mr. Chair. There's a pending case on admin case uh, with the Swara so with yeah. the NTC. So essentially, that's why we are urging no NTC to suspend muna habang nakikita natin na wag niloloko loko tayo dito. It's summary lang para pakita po natin sa taong bayan ang mga violations that we have seen so far. Not just their franchise on Section 4, Section 10, Section 11, mukhang ngayon pati Section 12. Pati ang highest law of the land, ang constitution natin, dalawang articles. Article 12 and Article 16. Even the KBP broadcast code, there are art, there's Article 1, Article 4, Article 5, Article 9, Article 30, Article 33. Sarili nating house rules din. Kasi hindi nila sinasabi yung totoo. Meron tayong Section 11C and 11E sa House Rules natin. At mukhang ngayon, kahit po sa Revised Corporation Code, mukhang ganun. So, we're simply really urging NTC na mukhang nagkakalokohan dito kasi may mga fraudulent aspects dito. Um... Sino pa ba ang next natin makikita ang manloloko? Sabi nga ni Attorney Mark, walang forever. Dahil po yun sa meron mga manloloko. At kung loloko kayin ka, diba, dapat hindi ka nagsistay sa isang toxic situation. So ito na mukhang may panloloko at naloloko tayo, kaya nga may house rules. 
at 'di ba? At mukhang lumalabas pa konti-konti at nagda-dodge sila sa pagsasagot ng mga tanong pag hindi nila masagot, Mr. Chair. Ang nakakatakot ay sino pa ba ang lolokohin kasi nila? Papayag po ba tayo na mandato natin to protect the people from misinformation, to protect people from people who are violating the laws? Papayag po ba tayo? Sana yung NTC, tingnan nyo yung mabuti to, na habang tinitingnan at inuungkat lahat ng mga violations, not just the franchise na makita nyo naman, paunti-unting may nakikita tayong mga violations, sana po, ay suspindihin nyo muna habang tinitingnan natin lahat po ng mga violations na nangyayari. Yun ang naman po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, can I comment to that, Mr. Chair? There's no question, though, Mr. Chair. But... Wala po siyang uh, hinihinging uh, sagot sa kanyang sinabi. Tony. But can I make a simple manifestation about uh, hindi about forever or not forever? It's about okay. the law. I'll give you one minute. Go ahead. It's about corporation soul, Mr. Chair. It's different from religious societies. Under the revised corporation code, corporation code is sec corporation soul is under section 108, 109 up to 113, Mr. Chair. Religious societies is article uh, section 114 of the revised uh, corporation code. Maybe the beautiful congresswoman. Huwag kang bumawi-bawi ngayon pagkatapos mo mag-post ng mga kung ano-ano tungkol sa akin na tawagin akong beautiful. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, just one, one the to one to the Tolentino to Wait, have a proper decorum. You should address the chair. And you should not point out somebody, members of this committee in your manifestation or else. Mr. Chair, I'm still a question with you after this. Sorry. When it comes to investigation, mamaya, yung resolution ng investigation, sasagot ka pa doon. Kaya ayos yung share mo, baka agahan mo yan. Sorry okay. for that, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Mr. Yes. Chair, kasi naman, like, klaro naman, di ba? I've not talked about anything personal. No. Let's not use this hearing to hit on personal. Sige, you can post on your page personal things, but let's not talk about this here because I'm not talking about it here naman. Um, and just to rebut na lang po, SEC, that's why I uh, said the case of the Iglesia Evangelista versus uh, Bishop Lazaro. Because that's a case that talked about corporation soul and its amendment and applicable nga ang pagpa-file at uh, applicable din sa kanila ang corporation sold ang 114 on religious societies of the two-thirds vote of membership. Correct po, Mr. Chair? Correct, Mr. Chair. So, he cannot say, again, a religious society nakasulat sa section 114 because I did my due diligence and I studied and came prepared to court today, to court with the hearing today. <laughs> uh, that there is an existing jurisprudence that explicitly already refers that Section 114 on the two-thirds vote of the membership is applicable to amendments of corporations to amend it to become a corporation sold. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, before we continue, I, I'm already, I already signed the uh, attendance sheet for the plenary. Uh, everyone here is uh, present in the uh, plenary. So now uh, we proceed. Mr. Yes, Chair. I think that's uh, very clear. Mr. Thank Chair. you very much, the Honorable Nogales, for the uh, Mr. Chair. for the, the rundown of the various violations. The Honorable Toby Campo. Mr. Chair, I just want to follow up if the written reprimand has been sent already. I think it's all. It's, it's all yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, nasa yung reprimand? Nandiyan na ba? It was always sent, uh, Mr. Chairman, through email. To whom? To the committee, Mr. Chairman. Can you please uh, pick it up sa ComSec? You might want to be able to pick it up. Are you sure? Are you sure it was sent already? I will verify it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Because we're going to pick it up now. So, because the Honorable Toby Janko does not want to uh, let go of that uh, particular uh, document because of his line of questioning in the second round. Thank you. 
So, okay. So, and there are no other questions to be asked by the uh, member now. Mr. Chair? Not Attorney Domingo. Yes, uh, with your permission, because uh, Congressman uh, Nugrales mentioned about the NTC case. Yes. And uh, we are actually handling that, Your Honor. And yes. one of the prayers, just to amplify and echo the uh, resolution, we have a prayer for the cease and desist of similar broadcasts of SMNI on this matter. So that might be a good way of uh, segueing on that as well, Your Honor. Just a matter of uh, information, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Attorney Domingo. Okay, that being said, uh, Mr. Chair. yes, no, no, yes. Oh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Are we, if we are concluded with the uh, yes, questioning, we are. I would like to make a motion, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chair, uh, I may I move if the sponsor is so minded to amend House Resolution again, one four nine nine, to be amended to include the last whereas clause to read as follows. Which is whereas the mandatory requirements in Section ten and eleven are distinct and separate from the annual report required to be submitted by the franchisee under Section 12, the mere inclusion of any change in ownership in the annual report is not the compliance contemplated by the aforementioned sections. Considering that the grantee is operating a business that requires 100% Filipino ownership and any change thereof requires scrutiny by Congress in order to protect public interest. Mr. Chair. That is a specific amendment. So you're adi you're amending by addition. Addition, Mr. Chair. By addition. You're not deleting anything. You're not... Okay. A last word, ask close. There's a motion Chair. to amend the uh, bill of the Honorable... Uh, uh, the resolution of the Honorable Nograles. Any second? Second. Amend the amendment by addition is hereby approved. Any other amendments? If there are no other amendments, the Chair will entertain a motion for the approval of the committee report. Mr. Chair, uh, if I may be recognized, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the Honorable uh, uh, There being no other members who wish to give comments uh, regarding the said House resolution, I move that we approve said House resolution. There's Seconded, a, Mr. Chair. On, on which one? On the committee report? On the committee report. Yes. On there's, the committee report as amended, Mr. Chair. There's a motion by the Honorable uh, D of uh, Isabella. Any second? Seconded, Mr. Chair. There's too many members that said second. But uh, the, the, the loudest would be the Honorable Aquino and the Honorable J.J. Suarez. Uh, duly seconded by the Honorable Aquino and the Honorable J.J. Suarez. Any objections? The chair hearing none. House Resolution Number 1499, as amended, is hereby approved. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair. Honorable. Uh... Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So since uh, tapos naman na po ang uh, pag-take on natin ng resolution and it has, uh, the committee report has been approved, uh, mayroon lang po akong uh, gustong ipaliwanag din regarding this. So I'm not uh, objecting to the uh, resolution. In fact, uh, tayo po ay natutuwa na dahil sa res resolution na na-file ni uh, Congresswoman Grades ay nakatulong ito para mas mapag-usapan natin talaga ang mga uh, maraming violations at ang mga hindi tamang ginagawa ng uh, SMNI. Uh, but uh, moving forward, Mr. Chair, uh, in our efforts against uh, fake news and disinformation, uh, nais pong uh, isulong ng mga kabataan ay uh, ang consistency sa ating mga efforts. We have to go after all sources and we must have a clear goal through a holistic approach in combating these uh, social problems. Also, Mr. Chair, uh, we also need to ensure na yung mga individual din talaga na sila ang mga namuno sa ganitong mga maling uh, nangyayari ay mapanagot to the fullest extent of our laws. Finally, Mr. Chair, ang isang concern natin ay uh, with uh, the NTC that has a uh, record of blocking websites, for example, na yun din ay mga bahagi ng alternative media and people's organizations at ang basis din ng pagbablock sa mga ayon ay red tagging din mismo. Kaya with that, Mr. Chair, as a matter of principle, uh, I uh, abstain from uh, the committee report. Uh, notwithstanding yung mga layunin natin to combat fake news, red tagging, and disinformation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. much. Uh, we uh, uh, respect that. Uh, so, the Honorable... Um, 
uh, there's a there's yours is just a abstention. You you're manifesting that you are your vote is abstention. Okay. Uh, on a uh, majority uh, vote with one uh, abstention, the committee report approving the uh, resolution HR House Resolution Number One Four One Four Nine Nine as amended is hereby approved i i will suspend the session because there's another issue uh, that we will have to tackle uh which is the the quest of Ka eric there's a letter in our possession uh of uh, Ka eric for furlough and uh, the committee will have to uh, tackle this uh, so we will just suspend and uh, we will ask the resource persons to uh, those that are not uh, part of this can already go, as this will already be a committee uh, action only. Uh, if uh, the request of uh, for humanitarian reasons, we will uh, grant the res the request of the of Ka Eric. There's only one letter, Ka Eric. Wala po tayong sulat galing po kay So uh, we will now. Uh, this session is hereby suspended. Chairman. Clarify lang sana, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Kasi uh, the, the motion for reconsideration that was received by the chairman, and of course this committee, came from Eric, Ka Eric. Yes. Wala po yung kay... Calorain. Calorain. Now, he will be represented by, by Attorney Mark, and it is in line with the privileged speech of... Uh, Congressman yes. Gigi Suarez. Yes. So, tapos na tayo doon sa House Reserve for Suspension, balik tayo doon sa inquiry ni AJ Legislation. Just yes. to make it clear, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Kasi, Mr. Chairman, but of course, yung ibang mga resource person, pwede na nga mag-excuse. Okay din ako i-suspend. Pero I just want uh, to make it clear, Mr. Chairman, that the lawyer, and until now, until today, he still stand for Ka Eric and uh, Lorraine Badoy, should be present. Kasi wala naman dito si Ka Eric. Kasi I have to to ask him. Yes, okay. Okay, uh, so, so Mr. Chairman, yeah, like can said, you assure me that Attorney Mark will be present? Yes, Attorney Thank Mark. You, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can we ask the lawyers of Calderon and Ka that, Eric to no, be Mr. present? Chairman. It is uh, for the best interest of your clients. Uh, who, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, we asked you, you're still lawyering for both, right? The me manifestation. And Attorney Rolex, Mr. Chair. Kain dalawa. Yes, Mr. Salamat. And also for SMNI, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. I just would like to uh, again uh, inform you. No, we're already suspended. But wala pa ho yung email nyo. Nagantay kami ng email. Wala pong dumatating, ha? We just opened. We just uh, checked the email of uh, the house. Wala pa. So before we resume, sana nandyan na po. Okay? So maraming salamat to the resource persons, the different government agencies that have no uh, would would not be needed for the uh, furlough of Ka Eric. You are now excused. Thank you very much for coming and joining this uh, almost five hour uh, committee hearing. Maraming salamat po.